Well, officially it's not by thirty yet. No, we can stop. Okay, welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District monthly meeting. We're going to start out with a public hearing about uh, properties located at 164, 166, 168, and 170 Ashworth Avenue. First, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I thought we'd have more people tonight, so we're going to start. We're trying to go parking. <laughs> <laughs> the town was very generous and was able to uh, make sure the parking lot across the street was uh, plowed. I think that was for us, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off by um, just I'm going to I'm going to just talk about the um, Ashworth Avenue parking lot. Um, I think everybody knows that the lot was located uh, what was formerly Clues Furniture and Hardware Store. It is, uh, again, 164 to 170 Ashworth Avenue. It's uh, situated between Fellows Ave and Tuttle Ave, if anybody in, in town who wants to know exactly where the space was. We've done a little bit of research. Um, the paper quoted us a little higher on the amount of parking spots. I think we're I think we're talking to Michael Neal, uh, who's been running our parking lot on Ashworth Avenue and Brown. We're at about 75 parking spots for this particular lot. He figures we can put into the space. We um, the assessed value of the land, as well as tearing down the land, will will run approximately $1 million to, to tear down the property and to have it set for parking. Uh, what we want to do is have people have the, uh, is not to affect the side streets by having an in and out on Ashworth Avenue. That's one concern that people have called me about. Uh, so it'll be a typical parking lot on, uh, in Hampton Beach. I think that we will probably just uh, gravel the lot, and that will um, not affect <coughs> any um, drainage issues. Right now, I would say 70, 75% of the lot, this is just from me, not from me guessing, is approximately um, covered. So this would actually help drainage in that area. So that's one of the things we're doing. What I hope for is to take a 20-year bond, and by taking a 20-year bond, where, where interest rates are very low right now, um, we'll be able to pay for this lot from the revenue that is brought in. Looking at the size of the lot we have here on Brown Ave and Ashworth, we took in 142,000. Is that right, Steve? 140,000. All right, 140. Um, this location isn't as good as that location, but it um, we, we're, we're figuring it's going to take in around 100,000. This is talking with Mike O'Neill, talking with other people that have parking lots, um, and the cost of the bond issue, and uh, we, we, we should have no trouble paying this. Now today, um, we're fortunate that uh, John Kane, this was uh, one of his expertise, was uh, was working in, in with bonds, um, and I'm going to ask him to talk to us about it a little later. Um, he looked into the different ways of funding this, and it's not, it, unfortunately, I thought it was like a regular mortgage. You get 20 years of payment, and you pay the same each month. It actually starts at a higher level and works its way down. So the beginning years, you're paying a higher amount per year to the bond, and we'll have, uh, we'll have John talk about that. Um, so. It might be a little tight in the beginning, and then each year it'll, it'll get better, and it'll bring more money into the village district. But it's not all about money bring, being brought into the village. What is, this is going to do is service the residents of the village district, the retailers, the restaurant owners, and people that uh, work at the beach, and people that have a need for additional parking. What's happened over the years is we have continually lost parking, and we're not replacing it. We have a nice parking lot on the south side of the beach. I'm sorry, the north side of the beach, and now this is making a nice one on the on the south side, so we can service everybody. 
So before I go to to uh, the audience, I want to—I don't know if either one of the other commissioners want to make any comments, and then we can take questions, and then we can also ask uh, John to explain um, how the bond works. And we're also fortunate to have uh, Sharon Cuddy Summers, our attorney here, to answer any of the legal questions that that you might have. Bob, do you have anything? Just uh, how how do we arrive at the value of the land? The value of the land it was the, the, what they are looking for. The value of the land is the assessed value that is has been of last bill, which was December, and that's where where they that's where they came up with their figure. So they they're not looking for anything more than the assessed value of the land. Morning. I'm good. I just want to hear about the bond. So. All right. Anybody in the audience have any questions? I think I'd rather hear the bond process before we open up the discussion. You ready? That's my sure. All right. So, um, Mr. Renier wants to hear about the bond process. If you couldn't hear at home, we uh, we have been instructed that we need to use our mics more. So, if you have anything to say, please get up to the podium. Thank you. Hi, this is John Kane, and I'm doing this as a favor for the commissioners. Um, Hampton Beach resident, I live at 115 Ocean Boulevard. Uh, Chuck has asked me to talk a little bit about the bond, uh, just to research a little bit. Uh, my background has been with uh, as a licensed representative for Merrill Lynch. I have my Series 7 and 66, which allows, which basically is your whole financial. Um, um, licenses to sell stocks, bonds, and therefore. I, <clears throat> we started out first with a 10-year note that we looked at, which is the kind of note that we had last time that we did the infrastructure for the beach, and that gives you a little bit more flexibility. But again, it was a 10-year note that we're going to pay back at a much quicker time. Uh, with the 10-year note, if you go through the banks, uh, they will actually let you prepay that uh, the note ahead of time, which we actually took advantage of. However, when you go out after 10 uh, years, your 15, 20, or 30 year schedule, you cannot prepay that back. It's a bond that goes out, it's a bond bank, and what they do is they basically will put it out. Um, I'm sure Sharon's well aware of this. They, uh, they sit around the table and they call all the brokers and they, all the brokers bid on it. Uh, the town's done this many, many times. And you get your interest rates and they, they basically bid on it just um, like the stock market. Here I'm going to give you this percentage or this percentage or that percentage. And that's what we'd be looking at. There's two kinds of um, debt schedules. One is a level debt and which uh, Mr. Rage had talked about. Uh, and then there's also another one which is called um, a principal um, rebate debt. And the difference between both of those is one will be constant throughout uh, and one won't be constant without. Um, the one that, that won't be constant throughout will start out uh, on a 20-year note um, uh, at 3.998 percent, and that principal and the, uh, the the full payment, which I'm sure you're interested in, for the first year would be approximately. And again, this is approximate. This is like uh, it's no more different than you going out and buying a home, and you know you're going to your mortgage people. They're going to take a look at your credit score. They're going to take a look at the property. They're going to take a lot of variables into account before they actually quote you the rate. So um, again, these are these numbers can change at any time, but it gives us a ballpark number. The um, level principal uh, amount would be ninety three thousand one 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 for the first year. That would drop down through twenty years, and the final year after twenty years of going through this would be fifty two thousand. So it, it drops down because you're paying off the principal and the amount on the principal is less. Uh, to get level debt, uh, which you try to do like you know, we talked about, to try to keep it the same thing so that you know what you're going through for the next 20 years, that amount would uh, start out with uh, 78000 basically in rounded dollars. Uh, uh, goes down a little bit to 73, 72, drops up to 75. This is just how the bond principle works, but on average, you're looking at about $74,500 
for the level debt um, payments going uh, forward. So it depends on what you're looking for and what you want to try to accomplish. You can either have seven, four, or five. <laughs> Again, these are numbers that we play with, and uh, that you know any anyone in the finance world will tell you. You know, we can't tell you exactly what it's going to be. That would be illegal. Um, so the other one again would start out at ninety-three thousand and drop down to fifty-two thousand over the life of the loan. So it depends on which way you want to go, um, how you want to finance these. It's completely up to you. The park and revenues, um, and, I, and I'm sure I, we want to hear from Mr. O'Neill, uh, you know, who's the expert on parking, and, and let us know, you know, what he can take in. Um, either way that you go with one of these, you got, you're looking at 78 or 93, is it workable? Uh, and if it's not workable, it, you know, it may be workable depending on what we vote on and what we talk about. Uh, it's like any kind of business at Hampton Beach. Um, for the first five years, you're not going to do gangbusters. You know, it just happens. But after that, it picks up and picks up and picks up, and that it, it's an investment in our community. Uh, the Hampton Beach Village District, and that's what we're looking at. We have looked at different things through the many years that I've been involved with the Hampton Beach Village District. Uh, we had um, the trolleys that were going to be subsidized, and, and the voters didn't subsidize them. And unfortunately, you know, they went away, which would have been one alternative to try to solve our problems. Um, but again, this has come up. There's an opportunity. And Mr. Rage, you know, wanted to take a look at that, and so I've done, you know, some of the homework for the commissioners, uh, just to try to get the ball going and, and kind of be able to have a, um, an educated conversation with the the members of the village district and the commissioners and the whole board and who else is ever interested in this. Is there any yes, questions? Question. Yes. Uh, can you give me a little rough idea of the pros and cons of the of the principal debt as opposed to the level debt? Which one would you? Well, I, I, don't, I know you don't want to recommend, but yeah. could you give me an idea of what would be the positives and negatives? Well, of the, the positive of the level debt would be that we're going to start out at a lower number, a seventy-eight thousand per mm -hmm. year payback, and that will go through basically or seventy-four five uh, on average for the next twenty years. Yeah. On the. Um, the um, the principal, we will start out at ninety three thousand, roughly, and drop down to fifty two thousand. Again, it, it depends on how we want to approach this. Uh, ninety three might be a little high. You might want to say, yeah, but we, we can drop down. We might want to take uh, some money and, and put it towards that to help you know uh, retire that debt a little bit. Or we, if we want to, you know, you know, have to talk to Mr. O'Neill, saying these numbers fit better into our equation, we'll stick. You know, you would make the decision to go with the seventy-four box. So now we can't the, prepay. You said on you the you cannot prepay. The, but no, but um, can you like, add like you do to much? Could you add more money to it some years? Say we had a ban a year at the parking. No, that would be pre. pre these okay, are basically called non-callable bonds. Okay. That you can't call them back. <laughs> yep. Basically, people invested it for 20 years okay. um, in a callable bond. In, in being and have been in the industry, people get pretty upset. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, over the the last eight years, let's say you were a retiree and you bought a bond, um, New York City municipal bond, and it was paying six percent. I've been on the phone where the New York City said, hey, geez, you know, interest rates are now way, way down there. All we do is we, we call. So they call back the bond, and, and they call back your 5%, and we'll be more than happy to reissue that bond at 3%. And you go, oh, great. <laughs> and I've had a lot of people cry on the phone. It just, you know, it's devastating for these yeah. people. So this is not going to be a callable type bond. Thank you. Any other questions that I can answer for anyone? So the, I guess I guess you can say, is the interest rate the same for both? Yes. Okay, it's so just how you're going to pay them back. We, we don't know what the interest rate is. Yeah, well, again, well, thank you. Just, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, right. we, we've done a lot of the discussion a little bit more conservative, right. so we're not surprised. Yeah. But, but the interest rate is the same for both. It's, it's just like a home mortgage. You know, you see it in the paper, and then, you know, depending on closing where it is, it could be a little bit higher, a little I bit lower. I personally don't see any. I don't see any um, value in paying a lot at the beginning and a little and less at the end. Um, 
be in a business because at least you know we can we know what the payment's going to be every year for 20 years. So yes, I just had to present it you know both ways for you. Because whatever interest rate is established, it becomes constant for the whole 20 years. Yes, absolutely. That will stay constant for sure. It's just how you want to go about paying it. Can you pay the bond off entirely? Uh, no. no. You, you, will you will get penalized for doing okay. that. Okay, so it's a 20 year debt. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not like our last one, which yeah. was a 10 year can't refinance. We didn't have to go out to the bond bank, no. And, and what Mr. Rage says is, you know, 3.99. You know, 20 years from now, uh, I, I can't say, you know, 3.99 is, is very low, um, you know, at, for interest rates. I remember buying my first house when I was in the mid-20s, and uh, Jimmy Carter was president, and I paid 13%, and yeah. it's like, and I used to go, God, my parents had an 8% mortgage. If I only could get an 8%, God, they were so lucky. And now look at where the rates are. So. You know, in 20 years, things can go up and down quite a bit. Yes. No, basically, you, you would go out and they, they will put this out to bid. And even with either way, uh, any kind of bond, even if it's a 10 year bond that you're going to not have to go to the bond bank on, you will actually have to get three different quotes from banks like we did last time. Last time we went through citizens, but we. Uh, I think we, I did a couple other local banks and, and, and put it out and all of a sudden, you know, someone comes back and says, here's, here's your rate, Mr. Kane, 3.75, or I remember it. Uh, it was the lowest rate, uh, even lower than the ones uptown. And I talked to Mr. Schwartzer about that and he said, ah, it's a great rate, it's, you know, it might be time to refi or look at some things. If it wasn't with the bond bank, you probably wouldn't have been able to do, do some other We're stuff. Not bond bank. Yes, we are. Once you go over, once you go over 10 years, we're going to the bond bank. So it's going to be the same thing instead of going to a bank. They, they're going to be bidding on this, and you will have people bid on this. Not too many people get, I think there was a couple um, firms, Sharon Devine and the Matt, and there's maybe one other that really get into the into this kind of <coughs> bonding work. There's, there's only uh, one firm in New Hampshire that I'm aware of because okay. he's, uh, the yes, um, Bond Council, it's yes. called. Right, there's another one in, in Portland, Maine that does, does okay. work here in New Hampshire as well. So the one we've been talking to is the one that we did um, 10 years in ago? 2005, I think. Yeah, was. and that was Divine right. Mellet or someone like that. <coughs> it was actually the same person that we talked to again. So um, that's that's the process. It's just like a you know mortgage, I mean a home mortgage, a little bit more work involved. Sharon's probably going to have to fill out 15 to 20 pages of paperwork, which she already says has been given, because um, they want to take a look at the village district's finances and how we sit and what we have, and, and that will also qualify where your loan rate is. Oh, do we have a credit rating? Is that something that they will, uh, yeah, they will give us, basically, or do we already have one? Well, sh Sharon, she's got 15 pages of docs, don't you, or something like that. I, Right, which, which frankly I haven't looked at in any great detail. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> I, I have looked at it. Basically, it's like a credit rate. And, you know, what are you doing? How much money do you have in the bank? What are your assets? What do you do to pay back? How does it operate? Um, you know, where do you get your revenues from? We got it from, you know, parking is one. We got it from, you know, um, the, um, the, the taxes, the other one. So, you know, we've got a revenue. Well, and, and the, the legal opinion from Bond Council is also going to be looking closely at whether all the statutory process has been followed mm -hmm. and, and the, the budget of the village district has been approved by the budget committee and then by the voters and so forth. So that's a lot of what that's going to focus on. Oh, yeah. There's a lot to even, you know, talk. Even if they decide to go upon this, it, it comes down to the voters. And if they want to know what the vote was, and, and you know they want to make sure that the voters actually had uh, a say in this. So it can be a revenue anticipated note or a TAN, which is a tax anticipated note. Either one of those. Anybody else have any questions for Mr. Kane? Yes. Uh, what are the fees? The fees? Well, that, that's a good question. Sharon's going to have her fees, and I think on bond council of, you know, I. I I can't hit you right, uh, but I'm going to say that's going to be about six or seven thousand dollars for bond council. It's a special firm that does this. <coughs> okay, that's one lawyer. Yeah. 
Sharon for another lawyer. We yeah. don't know what that cost is and what is the brokerage fees. There isn't that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, is that any points? You said it was like a mortgage. I tried to be simplified it as, as easy as I could. All right, so I'll simplify it and say there's no point. Right. There's no point. It's bonds. Okay, uh, does anybody I'd want to ask you a couple of questions? Sure. Yeah. So I don't have a microphone. I guess. If you have more questions for John, you know, you can yeah. stay right here. How's Thank that? you very much. Thank you, John. I think that um, when, when Chuck originally floated this idea last year, um, Probably, yeah. I'm waiting for the uh, for the fire thing to stop talking. Okay, when when Chuck talked about this last year, I I wondered. I thought, well, is that the best use of a piece of land down here at the beach? But um, they, you know, Chuck recognized the opportunity and the. Um, I think that the it's important to um, be very transparent and talk about this thoroughly and talk about the details and talk about the intention as well okay this isn't um, I think this is not just about the village district purchasing land and putting parking lots on it to generate revenue this is to fill a need for parking at the beach there have been there used to be a parking lot where the old salt was there used to be a parking lot where the a block is now being built up so there's less parking and there is a need for it. Um, will that parking lot at that end of the beach get the same action as we get with this lot probably not just because this has a better location but and it may be empty part you know during the week some of the time and I asked asked Chuck about this and he said that well, the opportunity to, that we'll have is that instead of the royal lot that's on the corner of Brown, we um, park a lot of uh, employees there, that people that work at the beach that have no place to park, and we give them a little bit of a, a you know, some type of special price. So that would be, um, would be able to fill it down at the other end of the beach, the, uh, the, the um, what is the name? Clues, the Clues parking lot, I guess we'll call it. Um, the, but as I said, the details have to be very transparent. Now, I know that I've talked to John a couple of times, and I've talked to Chuck as well, and Maureen and Bob, about the two types of loans. And I'm, I'm very comfortable with the revenue anticipation note, the RAN type of bond, because the parking, the way that the village district works, there are three pieces to the, um, to the budget. You have your revenue, you have general government, and then you have culture and recreation. Now, general government basically exists so that the village district itself can exist, okay? Uh, you have uh, the accountant, you have uh, insurance, for instance, um, the, the pay for the executive board, um, and various small things, okay? That's a small part of the yearly budget. The big chunk of the budget is the culture and recreation. And that's what pays for the advertisement, the entertainment, the concert series, the parking lot itself. We have, we have a, a payroll that we have to run every week during the summer. We have the fireworks, the sand sculptures, and all the other special events, the movie night. That's all paid for under the culture and recreation. Now, it's important that it's openly discussed that the, a person like myself that is not a businessman, I apply for an exemption so that I'm not paying for all of the culture and recreation part of the budget because the people that benefit from that, of course, are the businesses. And so that's only fair. And so the way it was set up years ago is that if people like myself or Bob Ladd or Mike O'Neill, for instance, that do not own, own businesses, we can apply for an exemption. And so we only pay for the general government. Now, something that happened a little over 15 years ago when Skip Windermiller and Mike O'Neill were commissioners, and Mike O'Neill at the same time was a state representative, was that they added on to a bill up in Concord that stated that all revenue 
except for taxes, all revenue is applied only to culture and recreation. Okay, so all of the parking revenue, all of the sand sculpture revenue, for instance, uh, the Ashworth Trust Fund, anything that's revenue other than the taxes only goes to pay for the culture and recreation. Now, I mentioned this to our attorney just now before the meeting started, and so she's going to have to look into that particular uh, item with DRA as well because to see whether that's going to apply to new revenue that's generated. For instance, um, it may not be. But just so that you know um, and that we're being up front, and this is going to be on record, and is that I talked to Chuck this past week. Now, under culture and recreation, we have a budget line. It's called parking lot, and there are now three sublines under it. We have payroll, we have supplies, and then the new one is going to be the bond payment. Okay, and right now we've we've budgeted payroll, and what we'll present next week to the budget committee is the budget that we propose without having the additional parking lot because we're not going to know any of that until after the, the people have voted on a special warrant article when we have our meeting at the end of June and once they once they tally the votes and we know that it's either passed or not passed and I believe it has to have a, a two-thirds majority to pass because yeah two-thirds majority for a bond um, if it passes then on the right on the floor during that annual meeting, we can increase these numbers if we need to, add additional payroll um, and additional amounts for s some extra supplies. And as well, the bond payment at the moment, I only put it in there so it's there as sort of a place marker. I put it in and I put one dollar in. But of course, depending on which bond that we end up with and um, you know whether it's the principal or the, the other one, um, we'll fill in that number. And so when it comes time, immediately, I imagine I'll start making monthly payments of uh, either 70, 79000 or whatever it was, ninety four, depending on 9311, depending on which one that they choose. But that's the way that we've discussed doing this. And I, it's pretty upfront. I, I want to make sure that there is complete transparency and that that there's no opaqueness to this because it's going to be the way that we're saying it's going to be. It's not going to change next year or two or three years down the road that we're going to do something different. We're going to do what we're talking we're going to do. Okay, so um, so I just wanted to uh, to make sure that everybody knows that. Thank you. Just one thing, Stephen. You said June. The meeting is in March. March, the end of March. I'm sorry. I, I should have said the end of March for our annual meeting. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Anybody else from the audience like to speak? Richard Rennie, 29 Highland Ave. Uh, you know, I first read this in the paper and I saw that figure, one million dollars. Boy, does that sound like a nice round figure, right? Uh, and I'm a little concerned about that. Why isn't it 970000 or whatever? Well, I would like to know a couple things, first of all. We're talking here of a purchase of a piece of, of three, I guess four lots. Four lots. For one million dollars. And I guess... You, That's you not the total part. That's including... The work on the lot. Okay, let's, let's, can I get a breakdown of that? What is it going to cost for the demo? Now, who's going to pay for that? Is the the, the seller? No, no we, are. we pay. We are. Yeah. So, out of the one million dollars, if we get the bond, nine hundred sixty thousand dollars goes towards buying the land. Okay, what is that? Wait, 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 wait. Nine hundred sixty thousand dollars is for the land, <laughs> and then forty thousand dollars. Oops. Chuck, could you, you tell the numbers? No, go ahead. You're, you're on a roll. All right. $960,000 for the land. $960,000 for the land, and then $40,000 to demolish those buildings, grade the parking lot, perhaps do, uh, since we're, we're going to do a uh, gravel parking, um, and Jay, since Jay is here, is that going to float? Is that a good idea, putting in a nice gravel parking lot for 
<laughs> for the water to you know go down through. Um, better than paint work, but okay. I haven't looked at the specifics. So I, I know can't at this point. I know at this point we haven't hired an engineer either for sure. you know, doing right. any of these things. But we do know that we do know from last year that it cost ten thousand dollars to put a shed, to put electricity in the shed, and to, and to buy signs for the lot that we have in front of us here, we say in front of the fire station. So knowing that, and we're going to have to put perhaps some fencing around it and some other things. So our, you know, the guesstimate right now is that that $40,000 will cover that. Well, all right. How many square footage? What's the, what's the total square footage of those four lots? I have the four lots here if you want to see. Well, <laughs> well, all right. You, know, you, you have, have a calculator. No, I don't. <laughs> you have it? No, and I didn't know anybody was going to ask that question. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what we're paying per square foot. All right. Well, what are they? Fifty. All right. Uh, Thirty-eight fifty-eight. Hold on. Oh, uh, I, I'm not. I don't have a calculator. Sure. Uh, you have your normal fifty-five. Thirty-seven thirty. I don't have a normal. Thirty-six oh one. Thirty-four seventy-three. What is that total? All right, so Most of them are like 40 feet. It's about 40 feet wide. And some are a little deeper. Just under 15,000, 14,662. Okay, so we've got 14,662 square feet. And it's costing us $960,000. So what are we paying per square foot? Ten thousand eight oh four. How much? Ten thousand eight oh four. <laughs> no, I can't no, be right. I don't think so. No, <laughs> no. Not, not per square foot. <laughs> oh, per square foot. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. What was the figure again? Fourteen thousand six hundred sixty-two square feet, and we're paying nine hundred sixty thousand dollars for that. Sixty-five forty-eight. Square foot? I can't be right. What I'm curious about: Are we getting a, a bargain here? Is is what is the going? We're not getting the beach? bargain. We're getting this. Uh, we're paying the assessed value of the property. The assessment. It was. It was assessed that. And that was negotiated by whom? That's what they asked for for the property. That's what they want for the property. That's what they now did. You as commissioners sit down and talk with their representative to come up with this figure. I got a letter from Kathy Breslin and Fred Fred Clues Jr. Who's Kathy Breslin? She's Kathy uh, Clues. Kathy yep. Clues. All right. All right. All right. And she sent she sent. I had seen her and <laughs> talked about it. She sent the information to me. I and I shared it with the other commissioners. And we felt that the, assess, the assessment was uh, fair. All right. Now again, I, I'm just going to be a devil's advocate here. As the, the three of you, did you discuss that further with any real estate brokers on the beach to see, or whatever, to see, uh, is that an appropriate price for that land? Or are we paying too much, or are we getting a bargain? Is that the town assessment? Huh? That's the town assessment. Town assessment. Would you sell your house for the town assessment? Probably not, no. So, they're saying they'd sell it for the town assessment. All right, they're saying that they were selling. Anybody else in the room sell for their assessment? They are selling this property for the assessed value. That's correct. All right. Good, I'm just... Asking questions. Yeah, but the, the, the building's being demolished, so the land has a particular value on its own. There isn't, there isn't, there isn't land around that's available. This is the first time in I don't know how long that we have four lots on Ashworth Avenue that's available at that price. You look at the land is only about half of that, so keep that in the back of the way. No, it's much more than half. Much more than half. It's about 80%. 80 to 85% 80 of the assessed value. I believe it's today, and I can't remember the number for it, but it's not. You can put microphones up there. All right. You know, future expenses. You're saying that uh, right now we're talking about demolition, we're talking about grading, and making it parking lot 
feasible. Mm -hmm. Is there plans to put a fence around it? That's where we're, we're looking in that figure. So that's the figures that we've come up with. What's it, including with the 40,000? Uh, okay. There's going to be, there'll be, there'll be lighting, there'll be a number of things. And that's all been factored into this 40000 We don't have an actual uh, list of Well, I just want, you know, they always talk about cost overruns, right? I don't want this to be a little dig, you know. We just round it off. One million dollars. Sounds very nice, right? Anyway. All right, uh, John Kane mentioned something here about, you know, the legal expenses for this. You're saying that it's going to cost us six thousand dollars for bond council, right? And also some expenses for our, our uh, district attorney. District attorney. That sounds very well. Uh, district village, village Hampton Beach Village District Attorney. Um, uh, Sharon's costs for her time included in her annual salary that we pay, or is this going to be an over and above? <coughs> we, we don't pay an annual salary. Yeah, we we well, appropriate a certain pro figure. A hourly rate or whatever. I, I would say that, the, the, first of all, the time that I'm going to need to devote to this particular project mm -hmm. would be what I am doing right now, for example, plus the preparation of the Warren article, which I'm involved with in terms of preparation for town meeting anyway. Mm -hmm. And then if this bond should pass, um, providing the necessary information to bond council, and that's really going to be it. So I think to answer your question, whatever time I need to devote to this project um, will be part of my normal hours yes, and will be included in the appropriation for legal expenses. Okay. Just yeah. So it's not a one. No. No. All right. If we, okay, now hopefully we're going to make a profit on this. That uh, we're going to open up this parking lot. We're going to have revenue coming in, and we're going to be paying off the bond. If we make over and above profit on that lot, what are the intended uses for that profit? Culture and recreation. It goes back into the uh, revenue. Which means, would my taxes go down? No. Yours would, yes. If you're, if you're exempt, but all the, the revenue from the parking lot right now, this past year, Packing lot out front of this building mm -hmm. generated 100, almost 140,000. Right. $50 shy of, of 140,000. Okay, mm -hmm. and that money goes to helping to pay for the the bands, the fireworks, and helps pay for all of that. Because you have to understand that the businesses are non-exempt. So the businesses pay not only for the general government, but the businesses pay for the culture and recreation too. But of course, it's set up that way because the businesses benefit from all of this. I, you know, all of, by doing all of these things, we bring people to this beach. I guess what, what I'm concerned with is right now a portion of the business taxes come back here to beach, right? Yeah. If the town sees that we're making a profit. Are they going to reduce the amount of money that we're going to get back? No, no, no. I'm just, no, 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 no. just speculating. No, one, no. One, thing, one thing that is going to happen, though, and you should be aware of it, right, is that once that million dollar property is sold to the those district, it's no longer taxable. Land, okay? So you're taking a million dollars worth of property off of the tax board. That will happen. But this, there's no. I, I, you've got to make sure that you're very clear on this. The, hopefully, the money that's generated from that packet list will be enough to pay for a monthly payment. Yeah. Okay, we have to pay that in the winter just as well as the summer when, they're, when it's covered with snow. The, but the thing is, we'll appropriate in the budget the amount of money that has to be paid for that year. And then whatever revenue comes in, whether it's from this parking lot or the other parking lot, it all goes against the culture and recreation anyway. You see? That's so all. That's. Do you understand that? Okay. Okay, I think that's just to clarify a few things in my mind. Okay. There will be questions in the middle. May I release? Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry.
You don't have somebody say this thing off because it's, it's impeding getting up to the microphone. And you I need to ask the technicians for two more <coughs> microphones, you really do, so people can hear you. Um, actually, you're talking about extra taxation for the first 20 years. After that, the precinct would own the property outright. That's correct. And yeah. any revenues that you accrue for the precinct at that point in time from that parking lot will go to you and to the culture and recreation. On the use of the lot, and I know Mr. Diener likes pervi pervious surfaces, right? And so do I, and gravel <coughs> is a pervious surface. Um, would your intent be to use this for the summer parking and then lease the spots off season? Because you wouldn't want the parking lot to be sitting there empty and snow covered all winter. Well, that's what they are now. Right, I understand that. I mean, if someone has an interest in renting it for the, for the winter, we'd be glad to take their money. You might be able to derive off-season <laughs> revenue by leasing. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little concerned for you just at this point in time. First of all, the assessed valuations on properties break down the value of the land and the value of the structure. So you should be able to get a, and, and I haven't looked on vision appraisal, but you should have a value of the land currently stated. Reval coming up this year, so what the land value will be in the future, uh, I don't know. It may increase, it may not. Do you have a deadline for firming this up? Um, do you have a commitment date? You can't make a, a permanent commitment till the voters vote. And I'm a little bit concerned about having the, the work session this is this is coming through fast. You're having the work session uh, for your budget, <coughs> including the special money articles, uh, next week with the budget committee. So I, I just I hope you can pull this together because you have to have that public hearing, unless you want the budget committee to maybe hold another public hearing. But you want to check on that because that has to be part of the public hearing. And, all combined. Remember, you're going to have the your warrant, your your general government uh, budget article, and then any articles, money articles that you wish to present. And those are all going to have to go before the budget committee, which right now is scheduled for February 17th. I'm just a little bit concerned about the pace. Have the owners of the property given you an idea? You know, they they've got to sell it immediately, or they're willing to hang in and wait for you. They're or? willing to wait for our for our election to to, to decide. Yeah, I, I think I can maybe address some of that. Yeah. Um, first of all, obviously we're here tonight because, as you say, it is a tight time schedule. Yes. We're trying to to um, there are statutory timelines in which we have to hold this public hearing on the bond over a hundred thousand, as you well know. And so we're, we're holding this meeting tonight in order to comply with that. Um, and then, of course, this issue will need to go together with the other money articles to the Budget Committee next week. Right. Um, and at simultaneously, what um, the commissioners are, are doing is to um, uh, try to um, finalize the, the, the terms of the purchase and sale agreement itself with the sellers. Right. And obviously, that's going to be contingent on a number of things, right. one of which is the successful vote um, at the town meeting, at the, at the village district meeting, for this bond article, right. and then um, various other things. I mean, for example, this would, I believe, um, require going to a planning board for site review for the parking lot itself. Yeah. So there's going to be a number of contingencies. Uh, it was good thinking, and if Mr. Kane can correct me for the John Wick, but I think, Stephen, the payments are annual on the bond. They're not monthly payments. Right. Yeah, there'll be an annual payment, and you'd probably be prorated in the current calendar year, and then you'd be on to annual payments. Okay. So, but it's, it's great thinking. Um, I wish you luck with it, and if you can, pull it off and be successful, uh, you know, at acquiring that, then it should be a benefit to the precinct. Thank you. Yes, Harry? Good evening. My name is Eileen DeVoll, and I live on Harris Ave, which is approximately a block and a half from this proposed parking lot. I would like to take just a moment, because the other speakers have been rather lengthy, but 
I want to commend the commissioners on this move. It's been in the works and in our thoughts and occasionally uh, expressed concern about what are we going to do. The beach is growing by leaps and bounds around us and so are the numbers of individuals who are looking for a place to park. They ring our doorbells and ask if they can park at our house or they block our walk so we can't bring our groceries in and they stay for two weeks. They park and leave. So under the circumstances, this is a brilliant idea, and I think it's a phenomenal piece of property, and you won't find one like it on this beach very often. I think the price is assessed value. What do you think you're going to get? A bargain? <laughs> this property out down here is worth way too much money, and we all know it. Because if we were to sell our piece of property, we'd be looking for a lot of money, too. In the meantime, I have to say that with the development just directly, almost directly across the street from this Ashworth lot, over on N Street, there are going to be several condos where currently there are older, a little <coughs> less friendly types of cottages that maybe don't attract an awful lot of people. It boggles my mind that we build all these condos that are one bedroom and they only need one parking space in a resort community that is bulging at the seams. And I simply want to say congratulations, and I'll pray every night it comes true. <laughs> Thank you. Luda? My name is Uda Pinyo. I live five houses away on Tuttle Ave. I think it's a great idea. It doesn't bother me where they park because I don't move. I leave my car there. I can walk to work every day. The only question I have is how you get in and out of that parking lot. Do you go from Ashworth Ave or you go in from Tuttle Ave in under there? You get out on her on Fellows Ave? Well our plan is to have entrance and exit off of Ashworth Ave. Uh, because that that was brought up by a couple other people in the neighborhood. And the other question I have is I hope you guys have good insurance. Well well I'm sure. No, I'm just telling you, you have the animal house next door. Well, I, this I go this to work at 3 o'clock in the morning, the furniture yeah. are thrown off the third floor, on the streets, beer cans coming over. What is this? That's oh. at the Regal Inn. <laughs> it takes the money <laughs> and leaves. Mr. Pierce, would you like to speak? <laughs> We're always welcome. Yeah. We're all part of Mike Pierce, 16 Hedman Avenue. I have a question. Was didn't the Hampton Beach Area Commission do a parking study recently that indicated we had plenty of parking <laughs> at the beach? And if that's true, which I heard it is, I haven't seen that study myself, but I heard it was. Then the question becomes: Are we going to the sell the parking and my question the second part of that question is if we want to have parking at the beach and they're too if the visitors are too uh, what's the word Jeez. too anxious to get to the beach they don't want to walk from the state park or some of the parking lots over on the west side what makes everybody think that they're going to want to walk from the southern end of Ashworth Avenue to go to the beach if they're too lazy to walk. I can answer that for you. There are people who are selling their driveways. Uh, people are parking there. They were selling room in their driveways this past summer and the summer before uh, at that end of the beach. So if they're going to do that, they are going to move into that parking lot. There's no doubt in my mind. There's also a a, um, a bathhouse at the top of the street there. Yeah. That was never, well, on the corner of Hazel. On the corner of Hazel, is that? I thought state. that was several blocks down. No, no that's no, right beside the beach. Just go across. Okay. No, I mean, so I'm just curious. There, there is, there is demand for parking. I understand. The economic. I understand. I've been on this beach a long time. Most of these people have been on a long time or longer than I have. Mm -hmm. And I've seen these studies come back and forth. I've seen a lot of money spent on these studies. I've been involved in these studies. And 
yes, there's times that we do have plenty of parking, but there's a lot of times that there isn't any parking. People are driving around in circles and they're leaving the beach. Every person that leaves the beach is, is a dollar not spent in Hampton Beach. And when I see kids that are working in the sea catch or the boardwalk or, or and, and they're and they're trying to find a parking spot. And the only thing they can find is a $30 parking spot on, on uh, across from A Street. And they, they have to work three hours before they break even. It, 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 it's, 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 it's terrible. And, and we have to have parking available for these people. Uh, the ladies here complained a couple years ago about people blocking their driveways and what could we do and have some type of um, you know, maybe a, a sticker parking or something for the locals. By doing this, we're opening up parking in a separate part of the beach, uh, and hopefully, people will use that lot instead of blocking their driveways. It, it's you can call the tow truck and have them removed, but do you really want to do that at two in the morning? No, you don't want that. Do you want to be someone leaving a bar at at one in the morning and they're hooting and hollering on the way to that a quiet neighborhood? We don't want that. So by having more parking available, it should alleviate some of that. Would you, will you be able to help these people that work at the beach, like you indicated, by leasing them with a, a really good price for them? Yeah. We do now. We help regular people on certain certain times. Obviously, the 4th of July is a prime time. We need to um, get a good amount of money for that, that uh, spot. But someone coming in on a daily basis, we will, uh, Mike, I know, will uh, help them. They'll put them off to us separate section. They may block two or three cars together where they couldn't put, where they could only put one and, and give them a better price. Okay. And uh, we try to work with people. And okay, well, I was just curious if you were going to give those people a break, because it sounds like they need it. But I was looking at from the study that, you know, you're aware of with the Hampton Beach. Oh, I was involved in that yeah. study. And, and a lot of it comes to the problem of being convenience parking. Right. Okay. That's a big problem. We have a lot in this town, the Island Path lot, that is empty most of the time. And it's not that much further away. And um, people just want to be convenient. If you're always going to have the front spots on the boulevard are always going to be full. Then they're going to fill the casino lot, the Ashworth Avenue lots that are in the center and then work their way around. Mm -hmm. And this just gives another, another option for people. Okay, I'm just curious if it's going to be economically feasible for you. That's a lot. Of it's not all about the dollars coming in. It's about helping the people here. And I think that we won't have any problem paying the snow. Okay. Okay? okay. Are we going to make a million dollars on the lot? Probably not for a long time. Well, hopefully over 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not making it. That's paying our debt. Yeah, you shall. <laughs> You're not going to pay it. And the is going up. I would just add. What goes on that land if we don't make it a parking lot? Something is going to get developed there. It's a pretty powerfully impressive piece of property. And, yeah. and it will and be taxable, too. Yeah. Yeah. It will be taxable. Yeah. But then, if we don't have public services, we won't be able to pay those taxes. I would have the desire to be here. <laughs> Brian Lapp in 27 I Street. I, first off, am not real sure where, what studies are we using? Um, I don't see much planning at all behind us. Behind I don't what? know. Behind our studies? Yes. Right, you, you, you live on the beach. You know right. what's, what, what's available well, and what isn't I understand available. that part, and I understand, yeah. but what are we using? Um, for revenue projections, what are we using for, what are we losing now as far as taxable income for taking those places? Um, what are we using for uh, our estimates of our right. past performance in our parking lot and then using conservative estimates? So it is, it is an estimate. Right. And that's why I say you're, you're kind of rushing this. Well, it's Is not. It all an estimate. <laughs> you can't take a piece of property that's for sale and say, let me wait two, three years and decide we're going to buy this property. Those people are not going to wait two, three years for that to happen. We have an opportunity, and the opportunity was now. If we don't move on this opportunity, then, then we don't, we, we're not able to take advantage of it. 
if the voters of the village district do not feel that this is a good move, they can make that decision. It's a two-thirds vote, Sharon. A two-thirds vote for this this to go through. Do you have any idea roughly how many spaces we're talking about? We're looking at about 75 spaces. He did, and, I, and at yeah. the beginning of the meeting, but you were late. I had uh, stated that they, uh, it was an exaggeration on the newspaper part. And, and it wasn't on yours, and it, it, it was, it was, it, it, and, um, must have, must have been Patrick, right? And, it, and, 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 and I think it was definitely somebody else's fault, that's for sure. No, it could have been mine. I might have said that. But that's what I, when we started the meeting, that was the first thing I said. But you, you, no problem. And my only last question was, um, and I didn't get a chance to look at the numbers. Uh, do we have any outstanding bonds at this time? No. Like the no. Okay. Well, it's going to go to the Mr. Preston. I, I, I just like to say that if, if the Blues family is offering this land for the assessed value from the town of Hampton, that's a very generous offer in my book. Um, you know, the clues have been around for a long time. You know, great people. You know, mom, mom and dad were, you know, super people. We lost them both a few years ago within a few weeks of each other. Um, I see that this precinct, I believe, has 85 spaces in these two lots, the far and the back. Approximately, yeah. I, I see the gross revenue was about 140000 I see that I think the um, payroll for that, I believe, was around 30000 Okay, so you're making a little over sixteen hundred dollars per space. Your your cost to run that is about three hundred a space. Takes it down to about thirteen hundred dollars space. That's for eighty five spaces. Those to me are the bottom lines of that. But if the clues are offered for the assessment, I don't know how many people in this room will sell their house or their property for their assessed value. It's very generous of them, but, but it's up to the voters. I am not a precinct voter, but thanks for letting me speak. And, and one of the things, I, I, Kathy and Fred, um, one of the things they said is the beach gave a lot to them, and they feel that they want to give something back to the beach. If they're looking for the top dollar, they could maybe want to develop it with condos or, or, uh, and, and, and really overbuild that area. It's, 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 it's available to be done. Uh, the other parcels that they owned on the other side of fel oh, is it Fellows? Fellows. Yes. I get confused with which ones first. Um, they built two beautiful single-family homes, and they sold right away. And people were like, why are you building a single-family home? Because they wanted to do something nice in Hampton Beach. Um, and I'll tell you, I think their, their family, their parents were some of the best that we had. And, and uh, I miss them a lot on the beach. So. Anybody else like to speak? Mr. Jones. <laughs> I guess there's three three points that I want to uh, generally speak to. One is the uh, legality, the other is whether it's proper to do, and then of course whether it's going to be effective based on what I'm hearing. Can you hear me okay over there on the uh, camera? I'm sorry, Mary Louise, I'll try not to mumble. But I don't want to sound like I'm yelling either. <laughs> There is a, a, an expectation that I'm hearing from uh, various people who have spoken that this is somehow going to relieve problems of the neighborhood. Uh, I don't see that to be the case for various reasons. One of which, the people who are parking on the side streets are seeking those side streets because they're free. You are not offering free parking. <coughs> they will not consider that an alternative to them. They will continue to seek out free parking on the side streets. Also, I believe that you'll find that, for example, Wally's Pub, which is pretty close to this lot, has a parking problem, has its own parking lot, has had some issues over the years. Sex in the parking lot, drinking in the parking lot, drugs in the parking lot, etc. And of course, this will be viewed as an alternative parking or a spillover parking for wallets. Not to mention the uh, regal animals that Udo was referring to. 
I think you're, going, you're, you're opening up a nuisance situation for the neighborhood in general, and it's not going to solve what is perceived to be an existing problem of the nuisance of people parking on the side streets. What are you planning on charging for revenue? Market rate, I assume, as you do with the other lot. So there's going to be nothing specifically attractive about this lot versus other lots, right? From a money, from a consumer point of view. The distance, as you mentioned, between the bathhouse and this lot is actually slightly further than the distance from the island path parking lot and the nearest public bathroom there. For those who are parking with some sort of um, view to using bathrooms, um, they may in fact exercise the uh, Wally Pub uh, parking lot practice, which is to use the parking lot itself for a bathroom. Alternatively, they may say, well, let's park there and we can drink at Wally's and go to the bathroom at Wally's as well. So I don't think they're going to be attracted to the parking lot because of the beach bathroom somewhat four blocks away, crossing two boulevards to get there, Ashworth and then Ocean Boulevard. This is not going to be viewed as, uh, you know, as the uh, solution to any particular problem, in my opinion. It's going to introduce a whole set of new problems, mostly nuisance problems. And yeah, I agree that it may in fact be a good business decision to do this, but it does beg the question, if it's such a good business decision, then why isn't the private industry engaged in this themselves? Why does it take government to step in if it's such a good business deal? Is our private sector so anemic that it's incapable of seeing a good investment? And I agree with you, Mr. Chairman, when you say, you know, you know, paying off the bond is not going to be a problem. Of course it's not going to be a problem. You have a monopoly. You get to, you get to charge whatever taxes you need. So of course you're not going to have a problem paying it off in that respect. If needed, you'll just raise taxes. I see there's, uh, you know, we have, we're going to spend $7,000 on bond counsel. We're going to spend uh, X thousands of dollars on attorney fees for uh, from our own Sharon, uh, attorney Sharon. Sorry, Sharon, I forgot the last name. Attorney Sharon. Uh, okay. <laughs> it is warmer and friendly, isn't it? <laughs> I do like to be warm and friendly. <laughs> But that, but Attorney Sharon's pay is not going to be coming out of this million dollars. This is an over and above cost, above beyond the one million dollars. So keep that in mind. And also, Sharon, if I may, harken back to the past with you a little bit. You know, the village district was created, as many of you know, in 1907, and its purpose. Uh, <coughs> was modified in 1931. And I'm sure, Sharon, you would agree with me that the village district is restricted in terms of what they can do based on what they've been authorized to do. Some five years ago, I made uh, inquiry to this body regarding the uh, charter of this village district. There was difficulty in coming up with that documentation. During that discussion, it was revealed it was revealed that uh, back in circa 1999 when the village district was considering a warrant article to sell the fire station and fire, or not the fire station, but the fire equipment to the town of Hampton for one dollar, and lease the fire station to the town of Hampton for one dollar, in preparation of turning over the entirety to the town of Hampton, which we did subsequently do. The question was raised at that annual meeting. Well, then, if we take away the fire station, then why does the village district exist? The only reason it existed was to service the fire uh, department duties. 
So it was decided at the AA meeting to uh, engage our attorney to go find out what our charter was, since no one seemed to know exactly what it said. Sharon, you were our attorney back then, if you recall. No, I was not. And, uh, I did not start until 2000 or 2001. Well, I said circa 99. I don't remember the exact year. <laughs> but I do remember five years ago, as you have the facts, which is a little closer in time, coming to the Village District Commission's meeting and asking about the charter. And, and you were there, and you said, well, I did do research back then, and I have all that work in my office. And if the uh, commission is so instruct me, I will go through them and, and deliver the report. But it will take some time, and I'll need to authorize that. And of course, the commissioners at that time said, well, uh, Sharon is busy right now, uh, you know, transferring the fire station. So could you wait? until that is completed, that transaction is completed. That was five years ago. I believe that transaction is completed now. So this would be probably a good time for Sharon to reveal or to give a report on what she learned when she went up to the State House uh, mm -hmm. to get an update on uh, just what our charter is. But in the meantime, I did put in a 91A request asking both the town of Hampton and the village district to supply me with whatever documents they had on file. The law requires that whenever a village district is created or modified that the documents be filed not only with the town, be maintained by the village district, as well as sent to the Secretary of State's office. Sharon's previous research, she showed up the Secretary of State's office and did her research there. So while I was waiting for the transaction to complete and get the report from Sharon, I sent 91A requests to the town of Hampton and the village district. And both entities sent me substantially the same material. The original 1907 creation of the village district and the updated uh, Warren article in 1931. And it lists seven purposes for the village district. There has been no identified document that modifies this 1931 document. One, lighting of streets. We don't do any lighting of streets, do we, Mr. Jim? The planting and care of shade and ornamental trees. I'm not sure we do that, although we do plant flowers, right? We planted trees as well. Oh, do we? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we, we're doing one of those. That's good. We do both of those. Good. Well, that's number two. All right, number three, construction and maintenance of sidewalks. Do we do that? That's a town handle on that, right? I assume so. Four, the construction and maintenance of plain drains or common sewers. We don't do that, do we? Town does that, right? The construction and maintenance and care of parks and commons. I think we have a little spot here and there called a park, right? Like at the Triangle, Ashworth. Is that, is that ours, or is that? DOT. That's DOT. Yeah. We, do we have a park? We don't. Do we? Yeah. Six, the construction or purchase and maintenance of municipal lighting plant. That's old language for an electricity generated plant. We don't generate any electricity. Either. Seven, the appointing and employing of watchmen and police officers. We don't employ any watchmen or police officers, do we? So there are seven, seven purposes here that the uh, village district is authorized to do, only one of which we apparently do. That's number two, planting and care of shade and on the trees. There's no provision in here for establishing a parking lot. I know we've had a parking lot at our former fire station. Of course, that was argued, and I think rightfully so, that we owned the fire station for good purposes, good public purposes. And the renting of parking spaces was merely an ancillary activity to offset uh, taxation. But what's being proposed here is not an ancillary activity, it's a whole separate business, which we apparently have too little faith in the private sector to handle or uh, recognize a good business transaction when they see one. So when we consider doing this, Sharon, and you fill out the paperwork, I, I don't know quite how you're going to handle that issue uh, with bond council and bond sellers about the legal authority for the village district to engage in, in this particular business. <coughs> I 
<coughs> I think that uh, you know doing this makes sense from a numbers point of view when you look at it superficially. I think when you look at it with some degree of analysis, uh, as I was doing from a legal point of view, as I was doing from a practical point of view, and also as Richard and I think uh, Brian were doing from a well, what kind of research to do? We don't know how much square footage cost it's going to be. You know, is it a million dollars? And it's not really a million dollars. It's more than a million dollars. Is it a suspect? Well, no, it's actually more than the suspect. I mean, I don't see how um, this makes a lot of sense overall. Right. Uh, I think that uh, we're going to be introducing more problems and expanding, again, the village district into areas where it doesn't have um, proper legal authority to get involved in. So the nuance factor, the legality factor, and the practicality factor is just all on the downside and as far as I can see on this. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak on this? Ole Peño, Title F. I live on that corner, I walk by that corner, I drive by that corner. On a Saturday and Sunday, there's people looking for parking all over the place. Right now, Fred and Cassie renting out the spots by the season for different cottages. They have at least 20 spots rented for the season from Memorial Day to Labor Day. They have other spots there they rent out by the hours, days, nights. I think there is a need for it because if you go over on, on the Q Street, P -Q -R. N Street, they're coming over, there's condos there, they take their leasing spots. Up in the island section, they're coming down here to lease spots. People, like I said, people driving by, they go in and, and renting a spot. There is a need for it. It just needs to be regulated. How are they going to do it? They're going to do overnighters. There's a lot of need for overnight. There's a lot of need even just for half a day. Everybody who comes to the beach and cannot park, they come in, they drive through, and they never come back. Because once you come over that bridge from 286 in, from 286 to get over the bridge takes you an hour and a half plus. If you come in here, husband, wife, two kids in the car, on a hot day, they have, the kids have to go to the bathroom. There's no place anywhere to come to go to the bathroom once they get stuck before the bridge. And with, with the boats coming in and out, it's a nightmare. They're looking for parking. And if you can have up on Ocean Boulevard a little sign there, parking down there, which they can go from, from P Street right down, go for it. I think they should go for it because once the once the, the land is once the land is gone, it's gone. Yet the opportunity will never come again. That's just my own personal opinion. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mary Louise had a hand up first. And, and if I may, uh, Uda, I agree with you. And this, I think the premise that the only reason the people are coming down to park in the side street is because it's free is incorrect. And I think if you were to observe that, you would you would know more about it than you do. Super quick on the assessed valuation factor. I've had occasion many times in the past year to go into Ed Tinker's office. This is private residential properties and say to him, my goodness, the property on X Street has sold for way above, way above the assessed valuation that you see on vision appraisal. The private sector uh, market, and there's been a lot of activity, you see the houses going for a hundred, two hundred odd thousand dollars more than what you see on vision appraisal. There's been a very active market, a lot of properties selling, and they are selling high. Okay. <coughs> you know, I'd, I'd just like to say if people want to look at, you know, do numbers, and, uh, look at the square footage, okay? The, Largest concentration, I don't know if I'm using the right words, of housing in Hampton is basically from N Street to the bridge. Right. It goes from the marina to what's called the island section. I, I dare anybody in, in the town or, or here 
to show me a more <laughs> dense area. And this is right in the heart of that dense area. I do agree with what Uta says, and you know, you, you guys have a good operators in the parking lots. You might have day parking, then you might have night parking overnight to try to minimize, because it's, it's a neighborhood. You know, there'll be things to tweak. Through the chair, uh, Mr. Jones, did you say four blocks <coughs> for the bathroom? That was my estimate. Okay, but well, N Street, where I said the largest concentration of housing in Hampton is actually probably from F Street to the casino, to the state park, but if you want to narrow that down, go from N Street to the bridge, and go from the marina to the island section. This is right in the heart of it all. I would say now, Uta, might, somebody here might know better than me, I'm not sure where you live. From Clues property to N Street, because N and O are right there, you got one house, Whites. Right. It's probably 100 feet. You walk up the top of N Street, and it's probably 200 feet to the bathroom. So it's not four blocks, and it's a nice walk, and, and a sidewalk. <coughs> so it's closer than people Avenue, think. N Street, <coughs> Ocean Boulevard, four blocks. Excuse me, you walk up you N Street. Cross Ashworth Avenue. It's not four blocks, but that's your opinion of mine. What, what, I'm, what I'm telling you is it's 100 feet from that property you get on N Street. You walk up N Street, you walk across Ocean Boulevard. There are crosswalks there. You know, they do work. 600 feet. And um, that's right in the heart of the most densest area in this town. Thank you. All right. Just one quick thing because um, we want to wrap this up and move on to our monthly meeting. <clears throat> Sorry about this. Eileen Bull Harrisav. There's one point here that we haven't brought up, um, but it comes up frequently, um, and that's signage to parking lots. We hear about it year after year after year. I can't tell you how many people stop at my house. They never, they've never been here before. How do they know there's a parking space on Church Street or Island Path or on Ashworth? They don't know where they're going. They need help, and signage would be a very important part of this whole situation we have on Hampton Beach. How long, Charles? <laughs> One minute, Mr. Johnson. We're done. I agree. Signage is important. Uh, so does so doesn't uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission agree? In fact, when they did their study, which revealed there was no parking problem, Hampton Beach Area Commission, I believe they employed. University of New Hampshire as well as helicopters and they determined in that independent study that there was no parking problem and the Hampton Beach Area Commission in fact I was just talking to the chairman Ninen just uh, last week about this uh, because it's generally recognized it's not so much the parking the lack of parking it's really where it is people want to park near the ocean side and of course, this particular proposal is not near the ocean side, but yeah. Mr. Ninen informed me that Hampton Beach Area Commission has it as a priority to get signage because he believes it's the education that needs to be uh, readily available to the tourists. They've been saying it for years. As to where the parking is located. So I agree, signage is very important. And once done, in fact, there may not be a need for this parking lot. The fact that this is a dense area is, in fact, kind of like a neighborhood almost. And putting a commercial parking lot in the neighborhood is a little disturbing. And uh, Chairman Buckley, uh, you know, I don't live very far from you. No, I'm I, aware of that. One might <laughs> <laughs> one might estimate that's a block. I'm sorry? One might estimate we're about a block away. <laughs> Is there a point to this? You know, there's a difference. So you know I am aware of I am aware of the parking situation. In fact, all summer I have someone at least one person that parks in front of my house. And that person, uh, at least in the last two years, has always been the same female who works at one of the businesses up on Ocean Boulevard. And she parks there because it's free. I do not give her any problem with it. And unlike those people on your street, which keep their trash barrels out all week long to keep people from parking in front of their house, I do not because <coughs> I don't own the street. So yeah, I am aware of the situation. I do realize there are people who seek out the side streets because it's free. Because I personally <coughs> talk to these people. I regularly enjoy their slamming their door at 2 a.m. when they get out of their work establishment. But that's life. We live at the beach. We have to be tolerant of these things. 
I admire your tolerance, Mr. Jones. Indeed, I am. All right, let's uh, setting up a, an additional place to pay for parking is not going to address that problem. <coughs> Thank you. I guess we can put you down as a no vote. <laughs> <laughs> no, since so, since so little facts are actually known, I can't be conclusive. All I can say is there are so many questions that point to the negative, unless there's some compelling facts as opposed to gut feel. I can't see how I would turn it the other way. Thank you. All right, we're going to call this meeting over at 646, and we're going to open a... Uh, no, we are set. Thank you, Karen. We're going to open a um, monthly meeting, and we're going to start with Lou Pinio to discuss the moving wall. You didn't. You were all set, right? No, no, no. I've got stuff that I was going to talk about. Okay. Lou Pinio, Thank you, Karen. I would like to ask for your support. In the March election, in the March election, to vote for my Warren article, I am asking for five thousand dollars to bring the Vietnam Wall to the beach, and that's all. Anybody have any thoughts? What's on that? the article number? There's no article, is there? On your book, on your, yeah. on yours. We don't know yet. We don't have it. It hasn't on been brought Oh, you mean us? Yes. yes. On ours. Isn't, on it, isn't it on? Yes, that's our that's And also 40. on the town. Yes, what's town. the article, article number? Article 40. 40 on the town. Article 40. 40. So you want a positive vote So there is two 40. articles. There's one on the town. Town and one on the And one on the Great. village district. Okay. Can I ask some questions about that? Uda. If you're fast. Yes, but Uda, could you go back to the microphone, sure. please? Because I asked a couple of questions at the okay. when we had the public meeting at the budget committee. Okay. When Glenn was representing you, and Go ahead. you weren't there. Well, he didn't know the answer. Go ahead. So I asked, who's on this committee? Nobody yet. Oh. Okay. Well, we I'm asking for people to. It uh, looks like it's been me and Glenn been doing the the work. Eileen is just doing the sh is uh, raising her <laughs> hand. Well, he answered correctly because he, he knew that you were on it. He didn't know anything. Well, else. it's really yeah. not a committee uh, yet. If I may, uh, when Mr. Moody suggested that this is a clandestine uh, committee at the deliberative session, what Uda needed to explain to him, and she did very clearly, was that you can't have a, you can't put a committee together until the people have voted right. that yes, you're so going so. to have the situation. What are we going to do? Right. So, so if we I get support from the town and from the beach. Mm -hmm. Then we have to form a committee. Mm -hmm. If that's if they vote against it, then still we're going to do a committee, and we go in a different ways about it. And the, and the other thing is that provided it passes the, the Warren article passes at the town right. level, and then also passes at the village district. Correct. Level, then you'll have ten thousand dollars. Right. Now, Glenn also mentioned that um, in order to do this in 2016. You have to schedule it in 2015, right. and you have to pay down payment. Right. I, I wondered, is that a refundable down payment? For instance, the reason I'm asking that is that, let's say that the down payment is $10,000. So no, the down payment is a, a, a $1,000 deposit, which is due upon the execution of this agreement. Sponsor agrees to pay for the cost of the fuel, with every mile in excess of 400 miles. So if they, if this particular company is out of Cocoa Beach, Florida. For example, total miles minus 400 from Cocoa Beach to Hampton Beach is times two is 2,324 miles. Gallons of fuel for that, 10 miles per gallon is 232 they estimated four dollars because it was high, so that's about nine hundred and twenty-eight dollars just for fuel. Then they want uh, motel charges for over five hundred miles travel per day. It's eighty dollars per room for two people. It's one hundred and twenty-eight. They figure um, two rooms doubled up for the round trip. One hundred sixty dollars times eight is one thousand two hundred eighty dollars. So for fuel, motel, per team, 
and the cost of the wall just for that particular wall is $8,208. That does not include insurance. The, the wooden framing you need to, to put the wall up, to set up the walls, flowers, flags. We, got, we, put, uh, we have to pay probably for police, some kind of policing. If we get the spot with the, with the state where they do the, uh, the sand castle, we're lucky there's lightning there. There is uh, bathrooms there. The stage is there. If we don't get that spot, when I talked with the, guy, with the kid from the state, he said something about the state park, then we have to rent all that stuff. So it, it's not just the eight thousand two hundred and something dollars. It goes a lot more with it, and we need a ton of volunteers. You need two volunteers for twenty. Two volunteers have to be around there for twenty-four-seven, just to to walk around. You need people to help to find the names when you come up. You, you need somebody with good computer skills who can go up there, and if I go up there, hey, listen, I'm looking for ABC, they go on the computer, and it goes, oh, okay, he's in section 15, line 21, and then they give you your little rubbing paper, and they send you on your way. I mean, you need volunteers. You need people who help you to, do, to find the people where they're looking for. It's not just having a wall there. It's a lot more than that. No, I know. I know, but and Glenn had mentioned that you're involving the local uh, legion. Right. They're going to help you with your security. They told me they'd support me. The only thing they cannot give me is money. And I said, I did not ask for money. I just ran it by you guys to see what you have to say. But your total estimated cost, I believe, was going to be about 25000 About 20000 correct. Have you at this point actually um, have any, anybody that's committed as far as sponsorships, you know, large chunks of money? I have one guy. Can you tell us or that? No, I cannot tell. <laughs> Just wondering. Just wondering. I think once guy. this goes through, there'll be a lot of right. there'll be a lot of people coming forward <laughs> with small do donations as well as large <laughs> donations. I understand. So I have know. one guy who really would like to do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Because if people if people think that there's if people think that there's you know that you've got a lot of you've got your Act together, you're doing all this work, you're getting a lot of stuff done. Here are some real numbers, here's the real story, you know. You've got but mileage. You, you, you don't need just things. one committee, you need different committees. No. One who is just in charge of the wall, yeah. one who does, like the welcoming <coughs> committee, one who does set up a takedown. I mean, and you're on part of those committees. You Absolutely know. not. That's why I need help. <laughs> so it, is the deposit refundable? That was the question that he was asking. Oh, I didn't get that far. Sorry. I don't think so. I read that. I read it. I read that. It's not. It's not? I, from what I read, I don't believe it is. Right here. There must be a timely written notice to of intent to cancel this agreement in order for the deposit of $1,000 to be returned to the sponsor. Timely. At least 30 days. 30 days. Oh, well, that's fair. And considering it's only $1,000, that's not. Yeah. It's not that Even bad. if you lost it. Even if you lost it. Yeah. Okay. But uh, if we can get up front, we can go within conjunction. Glenn is pretty good at, <laughs> instead of having the regular bands up there, we can have all military bands. I think he's very good, so. We'll he is that. pretty good. <laughs> uh, you know, so you're not getting a military band just like that. They are in hiding there, <laughs> and it takes a little time. You know, I mean, it can be done really classy. You can do discounts, like Chuck mentioned. We can do discounts at the different places. We can give them, um, um, we can make up a, a thing just like this and say, veterans 10% off, 20% off, whatever. <coughs> I mean, it can be done nicely. Are you charging a fee to look at the wall? Absolutely not. Oh, I didn't understand what the discount is. Discount, if I go to your establishment, oh, you're selling t shirts. Better, all veterans, 20% off. They go in, in the jar, the ice cream stand, ten, you know what I mean? As an incentive. Did you say that you have one person that's willing to pay for all? I have a person who would like to take over the whole project. Ah. Not to pay for the whole fund. 
that's what he was talking about. Very impressive. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Thank you, Olga. Good job, Olga. Yes. All right, Mary Louise. Maureen and gentlemen, I'll make it very quick. Uh, Commissioner Ladd was kind enough to uh, ask uh, or to say that I could come and speak with you very briefly. Two big issues. SWAT, Article 2 on the town warrant. Please do everything in your power to get your friends, neighbors, precinct voters. We need your help. And this is critical to you as well as voters and property owners uptown. And, and Bob has been wonderful about coming into the selectmen and pleading for help. We have got to get Article 2 on the town warrant passed in order to be able to continue to provide flood insurance to the residents of the town of Hampton. It is desperately important. Article 2, mark it down, engrave it on your forehead, <coughs> mention it at your district meeting, anything you can do to get the voters, that is critical for you guys down here. And number two, uh, the special police officers. And this hits you even more than the whole town, although it is a police department issue. A, we need your vote on the article for the second group of police special police officers that Chief Sawyer needs to train for 2015. My goal in life is to get that extra money in the annual operating budget, which is where it should be. We have got to upgrade our police presence, particularly for you guys down here, with the drug problem, with the traffic problem, and leading into that, um, we, I have told the Commissioner Ladd that I've had comments from people on Boar's Head, Numbered Streets, North Beach, and Commissioner Ladd said, you guys have other uh, areas on the South Beach and so forth. I'm going to try very hard to get public hearings held before the season opens so that we can have <coughs> notices sent to residents in these risky areas so they can come in and make presentations and talk to us and tell us what they need. <coughs> I'm fear seriously, I'm lobbying for ticket and tow. We cannot have our streets blocked by these individuals who come in and park all over the place. We have residents who are paying for their properties here, paying for their taxes, and they're, they've got people coming in from outside throwing trash, waste, diapers, whatever, on their lawns, using their yards <coughs> in an inappropriate manner. Uh, I guess, uh, yes, Tim mentioned that earlier. We've you know, got... People have a vodka mark. They can do that on We've it. got to have serious... <laughs> including the poor, poor Rick Griffin's yard. But we've got to start having serious enforcement at the beginning of the season. And we're going to need a lot of help from the police department to do that so that we can start establishing a precedent, a precedent for our residents and stop sitting here and letting individuals use us in an inappropriate manner. Our residents have to be able to park safely. They have to be able to have emergency services go down their streets instead of having them blocked off. So we'll be notifying you when the board is setting up the hearing for the parking problem. And we will look forward to seeing you and the residents from the beach area so we can get a grip on this ahead of the season. Bob, thank you so much for being there and for participating and really advocating this year. You've been great. Before you, what article number is the the special, the I'll tell you frankly, my brain is fried at the moment. Oh, okay. But it's for, it's for the um, the so second the class. class the chief is going to need to do two classes a year to to attract special police officers. And since the state is not paying anything now for for retirement for the regular officers, we're not going to be able to hire regular officers, and we need them too. But we need to have an enhanced police president presence on this beach and in this town. Thank one, you ever so much. One quick question before you, you leave. Thank you for putting up with me. Yes. In December, it was agreed between the board and the precinct to split the cost of postage. Right. To make a mailing. Yep. To everyone affected by the changes. Yep. Uh, where are we at with that? I'll be letting you know as soon as we get a date. It's been messy because of the storms. Sure. So yeah. probably close to or right after the elections in March, because I do want to get ahead of the season, we'll want to get going on that. And I will absolutely keep in touch with you. <coughs> thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. Would, you. would you clarify that we don't survive flood insurance? 
that we have to do this Article 2 because the federal government has threatened to remove our eligibility as individual homeowners to buy flood insurance if we don't conform to the new mandates. They have explained that there will be no availability right. for flood policies unless we as a town agree to comply with the necessary federal mandates. Right. Thank you, guys. Article 24 of the special police officers. Oh, bless you. Okay, Article 24 for the special police officers. Thank you very much. Um, and I look forward to hearing all of you at your subsequent meetings. <laughs> If Jason and Jay don't mind, can I just jump to Candace? Because uh, I think that would be quick. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mary Louise. Nice to see you. I am Candace Preco Stelmack, 488 High Street, third generation beach bum of Hampton Beach. I was invited to speak by Maureen Buckley and explain the common nature of our goals here. My family's relationship with all of you entrepreneurs in the audience, my hat's off to you, began in 1935 with the opening of Randall's Cut Right store on the B Block. Since then, the family businesses expanded to Randall's department store, which survived until 1990. My parents, Bud and Yvonne Crapo, ran many businesses, gift land from 1954 for about 10 years on C Block, and later known as the Cruise Shop in many, many years. My mother might, some, some might remember, sewed names on hats and bags, satisfying the, com the compulsive buyers that expected their personalized souvenirs from Happy Hampton to be finished while they waited. <laughs> my granddaughters now form the fifth generation of my family to work at the beach. And parking's a problem for them too. Mm -hmm. Good for you. My sons worked summers here in the late 1980s. That is unique an opportunity that is not always acknowledged for the positive work experience this provides the youth. What they learned by working with the public could not be accomplished in New York or Atlanta where they grew up where summer jobs did not exist. Besides the opportunity that Hampton Beach provides the young, I do not want to see anyone ever dismiss the importance of the economic engine this beach has provided to the tax base and the overall image of Hampton over the last century. It is a tourist destination bar none. Worn on a t-shirt, the words Hampton Beach bring out a huge smile and a warm welcome of recognition, be it around the country or even on the docks at Bermuda. As part of the group known as Friends of Gristmill Pond, who will be coming up to speak shortly, I would like to express our commitment to a similar endeavor, that we protect and preserve every opportunity in this town and at the beach that increases the popularity of this small New Hampshire seacoast. It is undoubtedly the finest tourist destination this region provides, and I thank all of you for working to keep it that way. Uh, Norm Hurley is the chair of our group and Chet Riley will speak on other aspects of this and we'll do it quickly. Thank, Thank you. you. Excuse me. Don't mm -hmm. Hurley. I'm sorry, what was the topic? Well, the topic is now the Gristmill Dam. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> just, just in case you weren't catching that. <laughs> Um, I'm here to ask you uh, for your vote for Article 38. Article 38 is to change uh, the vote from last year, which was Article 15, which raised an appropriate $400,000 to decommission the dam. And we're asking for an additional $250,000 to repair the dam instead of decommissioning it. We've uh, worked extensively uh, with the town, with a number of members of the town, with the uh, New Hampshire Dam Barrow, with the Army Corps of Engineers, with legislators, um, trying to figure out what we believe was the best route to take on this. I believe that the vote last year was a bit premature. I don't believe it was studied properly. I don't believe, you know, I, I truly believe that once we look into it and look into it deeply, that I think this is a much better deal for the town. And what it does for the town is it gives a lot of flood control which will be completely taken away 
if we decommission it. What it also does for the town is that although it shows $250,000 more, the cost of repairing the culvert and, the and decommissioning the dam would approximately be exactly the same or, in fact, a little bit more to decommission and fix the culvert completely. So it's still a better deal for the town to repair instead of it. It also preserves the conservation land back there, preserves the habitat that's been around for 328, actually 329 years now. It preserves the, it, the only remaining or one only remaining wrist mill out of 26 in the seacoast area that this state has. So we're asking you, uh, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions, but we're asking you to support Article 38 and vote yes on the Gristmill Dams article. Thank you. No, before you go, if I may, um, one of the, the uh, uh, topics that you discussed when I was at your meeting that time was the fact that there were no other options given before. Was it was it to decommission when you initially started this? It was I, all, there were no other options. You are providing another option here. Last year, they put the, the board of and put one option up. They right. were actually I, I, the Stevens Associates did a did a study on what should be done or what could be done, not what should be done, but what could be done to that area in that dam. They came up with seven options. Two were decommissioned and five were to repair. Okay, Of the seven, we picked one. We went through with Agro, we picked one that we felt would most fit the area to leave it preserved almost. A, 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 I will make no bones about it. There will be uh, flood control that will have to be put in there, which will, will look differently from what you see now. However, the rolling uh, brook underneath the grist mill building itself will remain the same if we fix the dam. It will not look the same if we if we decommission. It will be a cement, it's like a cement half pipe. But there was only one option put in front of the voters last year and essentially some people told or some people expressed that if we didn't fix it then the town was going to be fined two thousand dollars a day for the dam barrel. Well the fact is the dam barrel does not care whether we fix or remove. They, they care that we do something. And because nothing else was given in front of the town, the town says, well, we have to do something or we're going to be fined $2,000 a day. That was not the case. The case was we had to do something and it could have either been repair or, or, or replace, okay, uh, repair or remove. Unfortunately, if you only put one option up, that's the only option you were given to vote on. And that's what got voted in, um, it, 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 understandably, but there had to be more study done. And, and I know there's been arguments, and I can tell you, I've argued with several members here, okay, but there's been arguments, but this, to me, was just not given enough time to look at. We did not do enough, you know, deep diving into the, the Stevens report to find out what really was the other expenses going along with. If you remember last year, they coupled a, a uh, culvert replacement for a tune of 300 and I think around $50,000. I, 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 uh, don't quote me on the exact amount. It may have been more, a little bit more. Okay, and they were trying to get a hundred and uh, half of that from a uh, uh, grant. Unfortunately, the town was turned down. Some will say because we came in and asked to have it re-looked at for repair. But the truth is that we didn't meet the grant's qualifications. There were no upland uh, water that was. Um, that was that was a major problem, and that was to replace or repair uh, to repl to remove the dam, and that's what the whole premise was. There was a lot of discussion about well, that's what the state's trying to do. Not Niles Niles River is not a big enough river to to meet the requirements of what was put up there. They were searching for ways to, to reduce the cost last year, and searching for ways to reduce the cost of the culvert. Truthfully, if you repair it. The cost of repairing culvert goes down dramatically, and quite honestly, when you combine the cost of repair of the culvert with repairing the dam, it comes out to equal or maybe slightly less, maybe slightly more, but very, very close to what it would be to remove and repair. So that's our spiel, or that's part of our spiel, and I'm sure I'll have more questions. If I like.
So <clears throat> last year we were only given one option, and that that was a problem. So this year we're solving that by giving one option. Well, you actually have two options this year. Really? That's correct, because the option is this year is you can vote to repair it. If you vote no, then you would vote to remove it. That's two options, okay? Well, same it, as last year. I had yes no, or no option. No, no. no. Last no. year you had you had only put one up. There was no repair option on last year's vote. Right. There was a do-nothing option. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. So, so why, uh, all right. So now there's three options. It's a do-nothing. No, no. There's no do-nothing <laughs> option. Right. That, that's, correct. Uh, 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 that's correct. That's correct. There was, there was a do-nothing, which would <laughs> essentially cost us $2,000 that they find right. from the state, okay? Or, or replace. That was the only option given to the town. So the same number of options. Now you said that the grant for the culvert was an attempt to get some Fed money, basically. Correct. But we weren't given that money or given the grant because it presented no flood risk, right? No, that's not true. The grant that was written was for. Um, uh, I have to. I'm, I'm searching for the word. It's for. No, it, yeah, but it was for uh, um, water that was upstream that was uh, impaired water, okay? And we had no impaired water upstream. We didn't meet that because we didn't have, because nowhere on the state's list is the house river impaired water. And that's what the grant required, okay? And we didn't meet it. Now, they can say what they want, but that's... No, no, I wanted to understand what you were saying, okay. and thank you for explaining that. So there was no risk relative to impaired water creating a flood. Right, and repaired water was so that the fish could swim upstream. Well, quite honestly, if you move that dam completely, most of the time throughout the year, except for major rains and major floods, you'll have maybe an inch of water coming through that half pipe. Which yeah. would be the natural condition. Right. Prior to no, man reshaping the that, That's river. correct. Right. Prior to 329 years ago. Right, so back to nature. If that's what you want. I like nature. I like nature too. I like the way it is for the last 328 years. <laughs> well, that's me and me. <laughs> Most of it is around. Yeah. Uh, I have a question on flooding. Does your proposal reduce the flood risk? Bearing in mind, High Street is one of the few evacuation routes from the beach. Our, our proposal actually does. It, it, in fact, if you take and you decommission it, you completely remove any uh, ability to control flooding. But if you repair it, you substantially increase over what you have now, and you substantially increase completely the flood controls. You can actually lower the, the water behind the dam prior to a major storm that you know is coming, and then let it build up, and then control the floods much better than what you can do now. Because right now there, is, there isn't any flood control in there, or very little flood control, other than the fact that the dam is enough right now to at least reduce it. When you take that out, and you, you put that half pipe in on the decommissioning, you completely lose flood control. They would have to increase the, the culverts majorly, and it would still increase flooding over High Street at the, at the uh, High Street, uh, I mean, at the, right below the grist mill. The actual the Stevens report actually says it will increase the flooding, not substantially, but increase the flooding over what is existing now. But repairing it would complete would reduce it com uh, not complete reduce it considerably. Excellent. Would you take a hypothetical? Um, I'm not really sure, but I'll, I'll try. <laughs> There's someone else to speak, though. I mean, actually, uh, let, let's, let's let's get to the end, and, and I'm more happy. To right, just just one. all right. Last year, uh, the town instructed the town management and gave them four hundred thousand plus dollars to remove the dam. The instruction from the voters That's correct. to town management. Town management said, for whatever reason, I don't think so. And now we have this warrant out. Of the says, well, let's take that money that we were appropriated last year and do this repair thing. What would be your reaction if town management said, if your warrant article passed? And town management said, no, I don't think so. What would be your reaction? Um, what would be my reaction? I, hypothetically, I wouldn't be happy. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mel. Thank you. My name is Chet Riley. I, I've, you know, been a 
resident of this town for 45 years, a relatively newcomer, I guess it makes me. I happen to live in a house that turned 100 years old this year. For, it was built by a fellow named Harry Muncy, one of the early uh, movers and shakers in this town for 50 years. And so um, I guess I'm, I, I just want to say that what I said at the deliberative meeting, um, what you people have been talking about here all night, the importance of attracting visitors and tourists, applies beyond the sandy beach. I've been working, to give you a little background, for about 20 years now as a member of the State Agricultural Building Committee, an official uh, department of uh, whatever it is up in Concord. Um, I've been with a with the New Hampshire Preservation Alliance for about 20 years and my total commitment uh, has been to preserve what we know as the landscape and the iconic views of this state on the basis that that's pretty much what we can depend on to attract people to come here I mean I'm not I'm not I'm not saying the beach is not a very big thing. I'm saying that the whole state depends on tourism, depends on visitors. You can attract people here for a week and maybe they'll go up to other places. As a result of the effort that some of us have put in, um, we got a law passed about 13 years ago that gives us an ability to protect the uh, agricultural buildings, in particular barns. Um, if, if a barn owner agrees to preserve it, um, it it's protected from enormous increases in taxes just because you repair it. And that has led to this. 83 towns in this state have opted to do this preservation easement program. Over 425 barns have been put under protective easements. Now you think about driving around this state and what you see out in the hills and, and along the back roads. Uh, I happen to live on a scenic byway. Uh, we designate those things because that's what we want this state to look like because we know that it will attract people. And, and so it, basically we're running uh, parallel with what you people want the most is to have people come here to the beach to, to come and, and enjoy uh, what we have. We see this business of protecting our history and our legacy as, as equally as important. That's why when we say the grist mill is one of four left in the state, uh, and, and <coughs> grist mills were agricultural buildings. They were pretty much down here around the river mouths because that's what they could use to drive the wheels to grind the grain. But we don't have many left. And we have an opportunity now to, to, to try and preserve this one in a way that can be used to, to show visitors, to, to teach school children, which we've been doing. Um, it, just, it just makes, to me, a lot of sense to work hard to protect these assets that we have. And therefore, I'm just a cheerleader. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a member of the group with Candy that says, we really would like you to help out by voting for Article 38 to, to uh, help us get this into a position where it looks like it did 350 years ago and we will use it to its best advantage and maybe we'll be able to attract some people who will then drift down the road to your beach. Um, I don't, I, I, I am not in the mechanics of it. I'm just, I'm just a cheerleader for this kind of stuff and that's, that's what I've been doing for 20 years. Uh, with some success and I'm glad we have and I hope that we can convince you and you can convince your friends that this is a worthwhile project. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. <coughs> so that's yes on 38. Is that correct? Yes. All right. All right. So we're going to move now to uh, Jason and Jay, Jason Boshan and, and Jay Diner from, on the floodplain issue. First of all, I want to thank 
Good luck. Thanks, folks. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Good. First of all, I want to thank Bob for inviting me to the community this evening today as well. Um, and my understanding is you're interested in learning more about the uh, flood warrant article and then the CRS uh, work that we're going to be beginning. Um, in terms of the flood warrant article, um, the proposal is which is Article 2 on the uh, town warrant, is to amend Section 2.4 and 11.6 of the zoning ordinance. Um, the uh, amendment came about, it's to bring zoning into compliance with the preliminary flood insurance rate maps, which um, are on the website right now, and um, those will be adopted. It's anticipated for fall 2015 that those will be adopted. And um, that'll bring our zoning ordinance um, current with those maps, which is required to remain eligible in the National Flood Insurance Program, as Mary Louise had mentioned earlier. So it's a very important article to be um, adopted by uh, the community. Um, the changes that are proposed are a result of the compliance review from the Office of Energy and Planning. I worked with uh, Jennifer Gilbert, who completed those, um, completed those um, compliance um, changes. So I worked with her. and. Um, crafting the amendment in terms of our zoning ordinance and it was reviewed by various town staff as well before it went forward and uh, ultimately also recommended by the uh, planning board unanimously. So it's a very important amendment to um, make sure. Um, and also in terms of the maps, uh, as I said, they are on the town website. Um, I would encourage everybody to take a look at those, see if your property has been affected uh, by these changes that are proposed in the FEMA maps. Um, and see what, if your insurance needs also change as a result of, of those changes which are to be adopted in fall 2015. In terms of the CRS requirements, community rating system, we're just getting started on that now. Um, the town manager has authorized uh, that to begin. Um, I'm working with our conservation coordinator, coordinator Ray and Diane, on that effort. Um, to start, we're looking at the six uh, preliminary, actually right here, there's six um, criteria, prerequisites, class nine prerequisites that we've broken up on three and three to look into. And we need to meet, the, meet those six prerequisites to be eligible for the community rating system. And we're working to determine what we're doing right now that makes us eligible and what we need to do, if anything. So we're in the very early stages of that, but it's on our radar and we're working diligently to uh, to get that going. Quick question: When sure. when do they think they're going to adapt, adopt the uh, the new floodplain? When is it? The maps. Yeah, that was maps. fall 2015. Fall of this year. Fall. Yeah, fall 2015. So yeah, September. It right? takes a, they become final last of September. So that's okay. why the warrant article had to go right to the ballot right. this time. It would be too late if it was done next year. So oh, those yeah, changes had to be made now to meet. The war of the time requirements. And are there advancing. any uh, are there any um, requirements we already meet out of the six? Um, yes. Just checking. Uh, uh, yeah, it is a very good question. On the six, um, there are um, being um, in the regular phase of the national flood insurance program for at least one year. So we're in the program now, and, okay. and, and it goes back to the amendment in terms of maintaining our eligibility with those changes. Uh -huh. um, other items we're, we're still determining. There may be a couple items in there that we are eligible for, but we're at this time that we're doing right now, but we need to uh, confirm with certainty where okay, we stand thanks. on those. That's part of what we're doing. Like I said, we just started. I just. Uh, I was just wondering if we yeah. automatically had anything that we. We're in the very early stages of that, but okay. certainly at least one or two, I would say, we need for sure right now, maybe more. Great. Uh, Jason, I know you can only get in to the program, the community rating system in May and October, is that correct? I am not certain of the exact well, dates at this point. Okay. Is that true? Yeah. And from what I'm hearing, it doesn't look like we're going to be in it in May. Is that yeah. I would say not at this stage. Will we be in it in October? Hard to say for certain. I mean, we have, we just started our review, as I said. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be right. that would be a, a goal, I would say, to, to achieve yeah. that. But it's, you know, we're in the early stages, we want to see where we stand right now. Maybe, you know, if we meet those six now or, or very close to it, that may be entirely feasible. It's just hard to give a solid answer to that today. It, it doesn't seem extremely difficult to get into step nine. I would agree with that. And 
that's a 5% discount for yes. anybody who buys the insurance. Mm -hmm. And the, the more delay in implementing that, the more premium loss for the people who can't take advantage of that discount. Certainly, yes, I agree. So, yeah. anything you do to speed that up, we really appreciate oh, and it. Oh, and we will and work. Yeah. Yeah. And now that we've got co-coordinators in the town manager and the assistant town manager, That's right. I would assume you have enough support to make it happen. Yeah, I would, I would say we do. And, you know, like I said, the only reason I can't give you a definitive answer on that tonight is because we're still in the early stages, but I do know the importance, and it does seem like at initial glance those six. Yeah, those are kind of a slam dunk. Yeah, right. it gets a little trickier after yeah, that. You're not going to yeah. get to one, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Thank you. I have a question for you before you start, I guess. No, go ahead, Jake. Um, no. Go ahead. No, I, I got uh, ahead, I, I was just going to add to what uh, Jason had said about the timing. Um, I, I agree with what Bob said that uh, meeting the six criteria is not necessarily a very onerous task, but there's an awful lot of documentation that needs to be done to become a part of this program. Um, the, the requirements are, are pretty significant. Um, and, and the work that needs to be done is pretty significant, um, which is why in coastal New Hampshire there's only been one other community that's been a part of this system, the community rating system, which was Rye, and they dropped out of it, and now they're in the process of getting back into it. In Hampton, as, as Bob pointed out um, at the selectmen's meeting, uh, because we have so many flood insurance holders, I think it's um, 1,700, something in that neighborhood, 1400, 1700, it makes sense for, for us as a town to get involved in this, to do what we can to help our residents lower their insurance rates. But, but it's, a, it's a substantial undertaking, and I really give Jason and, and Rayanne a lot of credit for being willing to take this on. Um, I think the expectations are high. I think they know that this is important, but I would just caution us as a community to not expect things to happen overnight because it is going to take some time. <coughs> Uh, I would just mention in passing, Keene's been in the program for nearly 10 years. So it isn't, and this has no reflection on you people, you have nothing to do with that. It just time and money correlate pretty accurately in this sure. instance. Sure, sure. So anything you need to do that would be really appreciated. Any questions? Yes, if I might. Jason. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's my understanding, I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, okay. but if I'm right, I, I, I do have a question that's attached to it. Yeah. Um, it's my understanding that this Warren article is going to bind the town of Hampton to regulations at the federal level not yet written, one of which being the flood map. So we're binding ourselves to a non-existent document before the documents are created. Well, well, the flood maps have been prepared and then they're slated for adoption. And but not adopted. That's they're not adopted, right. yeah. So they're subject to change. And, and even if after they're adopted, they're subject to further change. But we will be bound to all those changes coming forward, right? Um, well, obviously we're bound to compliance with those maps, whatever they put forward. And, and, and my the compliance review under this warrant article was in accordance with the state. And oh, they, right, they I understand that. The compliance yeah. review and we just... I'm, I'm just saying, you know, the warrant article. Warrant article. Yeah. But... I find it a curiosity, and this is the nature of my question. I'm wondering if this is yeah. normal as a, uh, as a function of being a planner, mm -hmm. where you find yourself uh, compelled to advance a binding document to the town, uh, to documents that are not yet written, like the flood pl floodplain maps and, and other things that will be subjected to through eternity. Mm -hmm. As a result of voting yes on this one article, which I think we have to do primarily for financial reasons, not for not yeah. for natural reasons, if you will. Yeah, but I, I mean, like I said, as far as the maps go, you know, my understanding of them is that they are prepared. Like I said, they're on the website for review. Whether the federal government has any further, you know, mm. amendments, those I don't know the answer to that, mm. but. You know, all I know is that they're slated for adoption. I mean, is this um, a difficulty that planners commonly face, or is this kind of... Well, I, well like, like I said earlier, though, part of that is that the timing with the town, you know, meeting and voting on these amendments is that they need to be, you know, we, it would be too late if we did it next year. Those maps would be adopted. We'd be out of compliance several months, for several months mm -hmm. before then, and it creates problems in that effect. And... <coughs> 
Is this a common occurrence in the planning world where you you, you kind of like uh, in a town meeting situation, it could be because just for that purpose. But I mean, so it is common. Uh, I don't know that I've run into it, but I imagine okay. in the town meeting setting, it would seem to be because just based on the time that you do that annually and, and the timing of the maps, that you could run into that. It's not unheard of. No, we could have a special meeting. We don't have to be restricted to an annual meeting, though. You are aware of that. Though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Explain the implications of not being in the federal flood insurance program. As I understand, you lose all the advantages of the relationship with FEMA oh, yeah. in the event of disaster. That's my understanding, yes. Okay. And that's pretty that, dramatic. That's very dramatic, and you don't want to put yourself in yeah. a position where you take that risk. That's that's the thing, and this keeps us out of that risk. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we don't want to be independent. That's too fearful. You don't want to pay for Sandy. I don't think even you. No, we are paying for Sandy by being in FEMA. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, what would you suggest? We I'm not, I have already said I endorse this Warnock, Warnock. but I find a lot of curiosity <coughs> about why we have to give up our future-born children if necessary, <laughs> if the regulations change and require us to do so. That finds me a you know, rather strange curiosity for a people who are the land of the free and the home of the brave. So vote yes on Article 2. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, we <laughs> know that might help. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? You want to? I have um, some updates for you on, on some other issues okay. um, that we had brought so up earlier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not my, not my job. Not my job. Um, but, but first, um, I wanted to just reinforce what Jason was saying about flood insurance and, and addressing that now. Um, since the FEMA maps will not be finalized until September of this year, anybody who needs flood insurance because or needs to increase their flood insurance because of anticipated changes to the zone, the flood zone that their properties are in should buy that insurance before the map becomes finalized. They'll get it at a lower rate, those rates will be locked in, and those late rates are also transferable if somebody sells their property. So, so look at the maps um, that are on the town website. I think they're in the planning. They are. Under planning, um, you can find the FEMA maps and you can find where you are. So take a look at the maps, find out what zone you're anticipated to be in when those maps become finalized. And if it's different from where you are now, I would recommend you talk to your flood insurance agent. Find out if you need to make changes. And if you do need to make them, like I said, do them now rather than after those maps become finalized because you'll save some money. Um, the other things that I wanted to talk to you about are just some projects that are that are going on currently in Hampton, um, one of which is a dune restoration project. Um, this has been uh, a project of UNH, the UNH um, Cooperative Extension. It's also a project of New Hampshire Sea Grant, uh, DES, and um, DRED. And what they're going to be doing is looking to restore some of the dunes both at the state park and on the west side, southwest side of, of the uh, harbor bridge. So on the other side of the bridge on the harbor side. Those dunes there have been trampled on for years and they're looking to basically do some plantings in there, plant more dune grass in there to help to restore and strengthen the dunes, um, both for flood protection and also as wildlife habitat. They're also gonna be restoring some of the dunes between the ocean and the state park because those give us tremendous protection against storm surges. And the more we can do to reinforce those dunes, the better off we're all going to be. As part of that project, they're going to be establishing a uh, dune grass garden, if you will, in the state park. Um, that'll be planted and cared for, and then those grasses will be harvested and used to uh, strengthen the dunes. Um, there, this is a project that's going to start this year. It's already starting. It's going to go through probably the summer or early fall of 2016. Um, there'll be a lot of signage up so people can understand what's going on with this project. Uh, the Hampton Conservation Commission as well as the Seabrook Conservation Commission are both part of this project. 
Um, and we're also going to be looking for volunteers to help us with the planting and some of the other projects. And so we'll be looking for local residents who want to get involved as well as some of the school kids in Hampton to get them involved in the early stages. Um, we have another project that we're launching this year that we're calling Soak Up the Rain Hampton. Um, and what we're looking to do here, working again with DES, is to foster the use of green infrastructure to help to reduce stormwater runoff in town. We're going to be holding a couple of workshops this spring that um, talk about what rain gardens are, how to install them, what they look like, how they function, and how to maintain them. We're also going to be accepting applications and we'll be awarding uh, the installation of a rain garden with some cost sharing to one resident and one business in Hampton. And that can be anywhere in Hampton. So I encourage anybody who's down in the precinct here who's got a property um, where they do have some drainage issues to be in touch with Rayan, the conservation coordinator, um, to find out more about this project when it comes along. Um, we are on February 21st, which is a Saturday, going to be having a snowshoe event in 12 shares. Um, it's one of the town-owned properties. Uh, one of its designations is for recreation, and this is a perfect opportunity to take advantage of some winter recreation opportunities. So it's going to be on that Saturday. It's going to be from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Um, there's obviously no charge for that, but we do ask that you let Rayanne know if you want to participate in that, and you can just call her at 929 5808. And, and where is this now? 12? 12. 12 shares. It's um, Future Town Forest. Uh, exactly. It's um, off, there's White's Lane off Mill Road and there's Jaunty's Lane off Barber Road. Both of them are entrances to 12 shares. We'll probably be going in off of uh, White's Lane on Mill Road. We're going to be meeting at Town Hall and probably uh, use the Recreation Department bus to help everybody get up there. Um, lastly, provide, wait, provide the snowshoes? we can't provide the snowshoes. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I should ask. No, that's a that's good question, and we did look for a way that we could uh, borrow some from some organizations, but uh, can't be done. And without the snowshoes, they're not going to walk through that snow. <laughs> well, it's going to be a little more challenging oh, if you do it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, thank you, Chuck. He's got two left snow shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I go in circles. Are there skis allowed? Um, cross country skis are allowed. It's going to be a little more challenging because we're going to be in the woods. But sure, you can you, you can bring cross country skis. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is that the Conservation Commission has five warrant articles on the ballot for the town this year, which is an unusual number for us. Two of them are zoning articles, um, numbers three and four. We are also asking for um, an appropriation to our conservation land fund. Um, we do have a warrant article to establish 12 shares, as Mr. Jones said, as the official town forest uh, for the town of Hampton. And that's something that has been recommended in the town's master plan. And lastly, we have a warrant article for the replacement of the dam at Ice Pond. And, that's um, a private petition. That's, that is a, uh, a conservation commission. You're correct. That's a petition warrant article. Thank you for that. Question about that. Is, uh, where does that water go if that dam is That, um, the gentleman speaking about the grist mill um, pond referenced Nihilus River or Nihilus Brook. Um, and um, Nihilus Brook actually starts above Ice Pond, goes through Ice Pond, through what's known as the Great Meadow, down under uh, North Shore Road into Mill Pond. Um, and then actually out Mill Pond and into Meadow Pond and eventually out into the harbor. Because mm -hmm. that, that is a, I, I've driven by there regularly, and it's amazing how many people use that, that pond. It's, uh, yeah, if you've been ice by there. games every day. Absolutely. Uh, skating, it's, it's, it's great. And it's free entertainment for the people in the town of Hampton. Absolutely. Um, in fact, a bunch of us are going uh, snowshoeing out on the pond on Ice Pond this, uh, this Saturday also. So if anybody wants to come and join us, that'll be about 1 o'clock. And if anybody's looking for more information about the Ice Pond Dam Warrant article, um, we've established a website, which is hamptonicepond.org. And so you're, you're welcome to go take a look and uh, learn a little bit more about it. And if you have any questions about any of these projects, I'll be happy to. I have a question, but it's not about one of your projects. Oh. It's about the um, 
flood insurance. Does one have to have an elevation study done in order to obtain flood insurance? Is it wise, or can you get hurt by an elevation study? You can probably answer that question better than I can, or not. I'm actually not certain. Um, I, I think... I can answer I think the elevation. Don't have to have I, have, I, I don't know that you have to have it done, but I think no. the elevation of your property versus what FEMA is calling BFE base flood elevation is going to determine your insurance rate. The higher you are above base flood elevation, the lower your rate's going to be. They have a basement? No, cost basis. We all have cost basis. We're all in cost basis then. <coughs> I had a certificate done, an evaluation certificate, and I was five inches above the highest flood. But they already told me was that new thing coming, I might have to have it now. Where before I didn't need flood insurance. Sure. Yeah. I always had flood insurance. But I do think that lowers the Any other questions? No. Uh, thank you. One question did come up, and I'm not sure which one of you is more of an appropriate person to respond. It was the three foot fence restrictions on deed and land. And there seems to be a whole lot of people that are being negatively impacted by an unintended consequence. <laughs> that was a good one. Issue came up on one of the projects that came before the planning board last month, I believe, on N Street. N Street, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, you know, basically, what happened as a result of that deed item, the item in the deed there, was that a warrant article was placed by petition on the uh, ballot for to remove that from the deed. Now, my understanding, you know, I'm still fairly new here, but my understanding is down the beach, there's a lot of areas called lease land, where there's items in the deed that can affect potential projects so you know such as the three foot fence requirement so there's a, so it's what needs to be done I think is to determine you know where those requirements are and which deeds and, and you know there might there had been some thought about a petition to remove them from all the deeds I don't know if there's a blanket deed or you know we're still you know working on those issues but I mean it's certainly something that came to our attention on the end street project so and that warrant article would only affect that project. Right? Yes. Okay. That one would. That was petition for that project. Yeah. But I'm sure, certain that there's other properties in the beach area that would yeah. also have similar situations. But it's it's a matter of determining which ones do, and whether there's an easy mechanism to remove such a restriction, or or whether it has to be done case by case, which I don't know the answer to as of today. Well, keep keep the side on the board. Yes. Brought up the question yeah. to get answered about whether That's correct. Lincoln, he as did. a result of a conversation he had with some weird yeah. citizen yeah. at the Toluca section. I don't know who he spoke with, but, <laughs> but well, he has to be said anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, but, I don't but, think but he included the weird part. But. No. <laughs> but, but, but he did. He did mention that at the meeting, and it's yeah. something that we're going to be looking into. And that's what I was so it is formally being looked into. So that, that's what I was referring to. Yeah. Yes. Right, great. Thanks okay. a lot for Thank coming. For coming. Thank you for having me. Sorry our meeting was so long. No problem. Right. No problem. Very easy. Yeah, they usually 20 minutes. All right. So, Maureen, do you have any old business? We don't remember. Books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. No, I, no, I don't think it's old. I think it's new. Bob, well, any old business? Uh, just a question on whether we, you're going to talk to the fireworks people about how to not get stuck in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they plan on doing that again, hopefully. Well, this is the second time. Yeah. So we'll work on that, I'm sure. All right. I have no other. Yeah, exactly. All right. Any new business, Maureen? Yes. <laughs> Where's the coloring books? <laughs> That's older than Duras. Not old. It's grand, spanny new. Where is it? I want to see it. I want people to see our the coloring book is ready to go. It advertises everything that the Hampton Beach Village District does uh, for the community. Um, <laughs> Mr. French, I do. Just show it off and 
and they we will be going to print will be shortly. Is that mm. just, that's not uh, the final product? Yes, that's it is it the is. final product, but it hasn't. This is the plus we proof. Printed. We're printing less of them now, correct? Yeah, we're, we're at 2044. Okay, that's fine. This is the press proof. We approve this, and it goes on the press. That's it. So How many copies? it should be ready shortly. 2054. Uh, no, in addition, not. In addition, Maybe to you. No, they're free. Right? Yeah, sure. yeah, prizes for Children's Week, amongst prizes. other things. Okay, yeah. Thanks Thanks again. Again. Along with crayons, yeah. Yeah. Apex, Crayola, yeah. red, orange, green, Primary Together, not separate primary, but together. Together, of course, yes. Uh, also, the Chamber of Commerce uh, Visitor's Guide is out. It is electronically available on the Chamber's website. I'd encourage the Village District to give you access on the precinct website as well, if that's possible. Uh, I think so that they can get, get it get online. They can, they can access it online, and they can view the whole book online as well. I think that's a good thing to do, and obviously it helps the businesses down here. So, is the coloring book online as well? Uh, we could do that. They could download yeah. different pages. I mean, I can we, download the crayons. They use Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the coloring book online. <laughs> no, not at all. The coloring book will be given out <coughs> at Children's Week, and uh, and to my special friends. To your special friends, all 2,055 of them. <laughs> let it be written. Let no, it be done. Maureen yes. doesn't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> I want it to be handed out as a special a thing. Question. This coloring book. I've got a question to ask. Go ahead. Thank you. Why are we only printing? How many did you say? Because two thousand fifty-five. Because well, the book is bigger than we were going to have. Well, originally, it was going to be twenty pages. It's now forty pages. Okay. Okay. There was a because because the reason I asked that is because we, we, I already yeah, paid for we, this. We got that. We understand. That's why we're going within that That's 2055 I I get a scope. We're, we're going to a smaller. We want to see what the reaction is to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously, no, no, that if it's real it. popular, we can always print it. We more. stayed within the budget by reducing the book number. I, I didn't know that. Thank well, you for clarifying. Thank anytime. You. Okay. By the way, do you have any new business? Press. My picture didn't come out as well as I wanted. <laughs> anything, anything on the music thing? Anything to not tell us? Are you in Next working month. on that now? We're working on Next that. Next month, right. we'll have dates. You don't want to listen to me draw. No, I really that. don't. <laughs> I just want to make a comment about comments that were made at the deliberative session concerning the budget committee. And some of those comments inferred that the non elected members, quote, the ex officio members, of the committee, i.e. the precinct, the school committee, and the board of selectmen, would somehow get together to overwhelm the committee and form a cabal or a uh, kind of a single vote where all three would vote in unison. I have never experienced that. <laughs> I've never seen the staff no. seem to be opposite with the <laughs> position. <laughs> and I, I just whether you think the budget committee is too small or too large, that should, that part of it has nothing to do with it. There is no conspiracy among the ex officio members. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay, approval of minutes from we have two uh, meetings that we have to approve minutes from our monthly meeting, January 14th. Page one. Page two. Page three. Do I have a motion to accept the I minutes? I will be abstaining, by the way, because I was not present at that meeting. Bob, do I have a motion to? I move to approve I'll, the minutes. I'll, I'll, I'll second. All in favor? Two, one abstain. I'm going to move to a public budget meeting. On January 21st, page one, page two, and page three. So I have a motion to accept these minutes. I move to accept them as presented. 
A second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. I don't know if we should even say public comments. We have so many comments today. Any public comments? Should we do that? Let's do it. Let's do it. My public comments are coming out as the moderator for the annual meeting. As uh, most people know, the annual meeting of the Hampton Beach Village District will take place on March 27, 2015, here at the fire station. And, they, you know, there have been a couple uh, disruptions of newspaper delivery over the past week or so. Yeah. So I just want to uh, uh, reiterate some of the legal notices that were published in the paper, just to let, let everybody know that we did everything according to plan. The, the legal notice of the supervisors of the checklist, Hampton Beach Village District, Hampton, New Hampshire. The supervisors of the checklist of the Hampton Beach Village District We'll meet at the Village Hall, located on Brown Avenue Fire Station on the following dates for the purpose of registering new voters and updating of the present checklist. Uh, actually, there was a meeting held last night, uh, the, and this, this legal notice was posted on February 6th. The next meeting of the supervisors will be on Saturday, March 14th, from 12 to noon here at the fire station. Uh, 12 to noon? I'm sorry. Twelve <laughs> noon. Just fast. <laughs> That's fast. Hey, we, 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 they bring right I'm sorry. Twelve noon to one p.m. Eileen, uh, may I ask a question? Yes. I see that you know the prior to March seventh, the supervisors will have a checklist posted here at the district hall. Will it be posted anywhere else? It will be posted where it's always posted: Beezy's Market and Lighthouse Market. Okay. So that checklist will be here at the district hall at Beansy's Market at the south end of the beach. Actually, Beansy's and Lighthouse are already posted, but he oh. couldn't get in here, so yeah, he'll be by another. it late another day. To get All right. All right. Just, just for where, where is the district hall in this room? Uh, the Hampton Beach Village District Hall. Yes. This is we hang it on the windows. Okay. Yes. I didn't know we named it that. Okay. Good. All right. The other legal notice: the Hampton Beach Village District Annual Meeting will be held on March 27, 2015 at the Brown Avenue Fire Station. Candidacy filing period for district offices, February 11th to February 20th, 2015. The last date to accept voter warrant articles, February 24th, 2015. To file or submit warrant articles, contact Hampton Beach Village District Clerk Janet Allard at 929-1170 and that notice was posted on February 6th. The vacancies for this year will be as follows, as they usually have been. Commissioner for three years, moderator for one year, clerk for one year, treasurer for one year, supervisor for the checklist, three years. So again, February 11th to February 20th for the filing period, and the last day to accept photo warrant articles, February 24th. All right, thank you. Okay, any other public comment? Closing comments, Bob? Yeah. This was really a good meeting. There's a lot of interchange, a lot of exchange, and I'm delighted that so many members showed and so many people appeared on behalf of departments for the town to inform us. And I would make one final comment. All things considered, the Department of Public Works deserves a great round of applause. <laughs> they have handled it. an extraordinarily difficult situation without enough manpower or equipment, and we're getting around. And sometimes I just don't think we appreciate them at all. The fire and police we tend to be more focused on that. Thank a snow plow driver when you see one. There you go. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Billy. You're welcome. Keep on plowing. Keep on trucking. No, I got um, any other comments this morning? No. Sure? Yeah. I can hear you. <laughs> All right, on that note, we'll adjourn the meeting. 7.55.
Christmas. Yeah. It's just wondering about the checkers. You got to order.